Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Verse 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, he says. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. The word of God captures the thoughts of God. That means that when we study the word of God, the word logos means the thoughts of God that seek expression. Not just the thoughts of God that are there just domiciled in him. They are thoughts that are his contemplations but that it seeks expression. So every time we study the word of God, we are able to buy into the mind of God. So we understand his ways the bible says we understand his methodologies the bible contains basically three things number one the bible contains promises promises god's commitment to man number two the bible contains principles his methodologies that god never or hardly does the same thing twice every time he does a thing once he creates a system around it so that we are able to make for continuity hallelujah and then the bible contains number three prophecies a revelation about the future so that it can give us hope hallelujah yes and so Theologically speaking, this was as a time where the nation of Israel were under the captivity of the Babylonians. And now the prophet comes to give them a word of hope. And he says, remember not the former things, verse 18. Neither consider the things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. Now it's amazing. That he did not just come to them and say, ladies and gentlemen, I am about to do a new thing. Look how, look the construction of what he's saying. He first starts with the old to introduce the new. Why would he not just say, I am about to do a new thing. Believe me and you would have it. But he said, remember not the former things. There is something about yesterday and its power and its ability to relieve itself in your mind. Now, please look up. God is about to do a new thing in the life of Israel. And the first place he goes to is their mind and their memory. There is something about your mind that sustains an ability to interrupt what I want to do. So let's work on it first. Demons were not mentioned. Satan was not mentioned. Yet it is deliverance about to happen. Please follow me. We have a lot to deal with tonight. Remember ye not. He's challenging an ability that is in every man. 
he's challenging an ability that in every man is the ability to remember your memory is that powerful it can hold on to yesterday even when you are in tomorrow now he's dealing with time here that life is divided into three phases are we getting blessed already there is the past there is the present there is the future please say after me the past the present and the future the past talks of the happenings they've gone with time and yet the memory of those events can remain in your mind then the present what is happening in time now and then the future what will happen with time and so he's saying that I am speaking to you now about something I will be doing tomorrow however we need to do something about yesterday so God addresses tomorrow by discussing yesterday are we blessed now remember not the former things this instruction is for two categories of people number one those who have experienced former things that are negative and destructive and then those who have experienced former things that are positive and great regardless of what group he's still talking to you he's showing us that there is something about the consciousness of yesterday good or bad that sustains an ability to interrupt new things in the lives of men they don't have to be bad they don't have to be evil in fact theologically speaking what he calls former things when you read from commentaries they talk about things like the triumph of israel in egypt so he's not necessarily talking about something negative but he's saying look you are basking in the glory of yesterday and is blinding you from what i can do tomorrow so i need to do something about your yesterday now according to god's design of man we think in pictures we think pictorially are we together if i say orange your mind has an image if i say mango are we together if i say i'm robber your mind will quickly draw someone i leave that to your creativity but your mind will guess and draw something that looks like evil are we together so our minds thinks in pictures and that there is your mind can exhibit magnetic properties that when it latches onto an image it becomes emotionally connected to it that even when you leave that sphere in time it will still hold on to it are we together now yes remember ye not the former things that means you are able to remember you can remember pain you can remember joy amazing that even death does not erode remembrance did you know that the parable of Lazarus and the rich man seen one they were on earth seen two they were outside the earth and yet there was perfect memory the rich man could see Lazarus at the bosom of Abraham and there were discussions happening he could feel pain he could remember what happened on earth and he was making reference to it in fact he said please can you go back to the earth to talk to my people memory is powerful it's a gift but it can be a weapon against you it takes memory to remember god it takes memory to remember his faithfulness it takes memory to remember details about our lives but that memory can be used by the devil to destroy us it takes memory to relieve your pain it takes memory to plant a seed of complacency and pride in you they are all memory dependent are we together now so he starts by saying remember ye not the former things then he says neither consider now the word consider is a very very interesting word very very interesting word because he's not he's not merely saying don't ponder please give us romans 10 and 
verse 6. Let me show you what it means to consider. Because your heart and your mind has a voice. And there are contemplations that can happen within you. The Bible says, But the righteousness which is of faith, speak it on this wise, say not. Where? It didn't say think not. It is not only thinking that happens in the heart. Talking also happens there. That a discussion can happen within you that is living and alive. The Bible says, say not in your heart. Who shall ascend to heaven? Now, you will not hear physically, but there is a contemplation going on. Are we together now? It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider to sit and contemplate. There are many people today, please look up, there are many people today who yesterday has held on to them the pain they and yesterday has a deceptive way of justifying mediocrity because many times it will give you reasons why you should not press it says this one thing i do you see that is a formula paul was also using it that this one thing i do the goal is to press but step one is to forget the things that are behind there is always something about the memory of yesterday. No wonder God designed man to never be able to look forward and backward at the same time. You will have to choose one. I can put my leg in front and at the back, but I cannot look forward and backward. You either set your face like a flint or turn behind, but in turning behind, remember Lot's wife. It was looking back that destroyed her. The instruction was to face forward. The instruction was to be determined. Regardless of what your impulse is here behind. Forget about them. But her passion of turning behind. Turn her into salt. It was not about Lord's wife. These are mysteries in the spirit. That if any man draws back. My soul will not find pleasure in that man. There is something about sustaining the stamina. To wave goodbye yesterday. I came tonight among other things that through the word of God, God will supply us the grace to be able to stand and look at both your pain and your achievements and say, I, I, I enjoyed being with you, but now there is more that is before me and that this one thing that I will do, forgetting the things that are behind. Hallelujah. This was the reason why the man at the pool of Bethesda could not receive. For 38 years, he had been accumulating memories of defeat. And now when Jesus came and said, do you want to be healed? He's speaking a man's future and the man took Jesus back and said, Mister, I've been here for 38 years. Every time, I still have it in my mind that every time I want to, the future is calling me. The memory of something that happened will keep me there. And Jesus said, I know what is wrong with you. If I leave you, you will remain here. Look, I'm already speaking prophetically to someone. You may never realize the depth. Why you keep having visions and dreams of things that God is showing you. A dream is, is, is powerful because it is able to transport you into the future. And yet you wake up and the past will hold on to you. And many of us are so emotionally connected to the past, you have not sustained the grace and the courage to wave it goodbye. Our lives and destinies are full of stories. Many justifiably so. Hmm. It took Moses forgetting Egypt to meet the God of heaven. Moses who was being raised to be the next Pharaoh. Moses who killed a man in Egypt. Moses who was literally, he ran away and when he got to the backside of the mountain, he had to now begin to face and press for a new experience. Pastor, I have learned by experience the destructive power of yesterday. Let me tell you what yesterday does. Now, the mind is a very powerful spiritual mechanism that God built. When God talks to you, listen to him. He knows what he built. The mind, you see, Scientifically speaking, the mind 
does not know the difference subconsciously speaking between imagination and reality you know that is that true that's why you can think of something that happened and cry physically because your mind does not you can be watching a movie and they slap someone you are you are aware it is acting and yet you still cry because your mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination the moment that picture is constructed, your mind believes it is alive. Now, this is where Satan, who is the master of the flesh realm, knows how to manipulate men. Every time you want to move forward, he will take your mind back to the past. And the past has an addiction to you. It will not want to leave you. The moment you begin to ponder on the past, you give it power to relieve itself again. When the Bible says remember not, he's not saying forget. Please look up. It is impossible to forget. What he's saying is kill the life-giving factor between you and yesterday. It's impossible to forget. There are events that you will remember as vivid and clear. In fact, if you forget, you should see a doctor. Are we together now? So his, the idea is not take it out of your memory. No. The idea is sustain an intelligence in the spirit where you can look at your past and yet what gives it life to relieve itself is dead. Oh, hallelujah. So Jesus can look at himself, the one who walked upon the earth and never be moved by it because there is the one who sits upon the throne now. Are we together now? Yes. He has never had to so enjoy what he went through that he said, Father, I leave the throne now. I think I want to return back. He mastered the ability to preserve that story for our knowledge and our salvation. When we want to know the one who sat upon the throne, we must know the one who walked upon the earth. But the story never ends there. He's not ashamed to let us know he died. But he also quickly reminds you he only died for three days. And when he resurrected, he stopped talking about his death. He now focused on his ascension and his exaltation. That's the complete story. The past. I apostle, I came from a family where I never had the opportunity to serve God. And the devil continues to use that like an artist. He paints a picture and magnetizes your mind to that past. Every time you are cold spiritually and the Holy Spirit wants to ginger you to a new realm, here comes the past, justifying your laxity. Remember you came from a background where if you had the privilege of knowing God early, Oh, Pastor Nathaniel, I'm 40 years. I'm not established. It's not my fault. I went to school late. I agree. But if you allow that, it sustains an ability to continue to justify your mediocrity. There is no failure who does not have an explanation. That explanation is exactly why they remain failures. Let me teach you a law in the spirit. Uh, is God blessing us? I'm trying to be as simple as possible. Pastor Nathaniel, there is a powerful law that I found in the spirit that every time you pass blame you empower things by handing over both blames and responsibility to them I always found out how I always uh, 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 you know was was inquiring from scripture how Satan became the God of this world let me tell you where it happened God comes to Adam and says Adam where are thou and Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. Next question, you have been talking with someone. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree and all of that? And then Adam would have said, oh God, I'm sorry. I take responsibility because you have made me head. Adam said, the woman. God stopped talking to Adam immediately. He didn't talk to Adam again till later. He said, woman. He has, if the woman kept quiet, she would have become the head of man immediately. Because man relinquishes authority to irresponsibility. Now he said, woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent. When he came to the serpent, the serpent kept quiet. He didn't blame anybody. So when Jesus came to redeem man, Pastor Nath, 
while they were saying everything and accusing him he kept quiet you now see why he kept quiet he did not keep quiet because he didn't have an answer who will he now blame he was like a sheep before the slaughter silence is powerful is proof of strength not weakness re-educate your mind spiritually we live in a talkative generation where we are under pressure to always speak i show you the power of silence it shows stamina in the spirit when you are still then you will know he is god are we blessed yes so we're discussing yesterday yesterday has the power to destroy today it has the power to destroy tomorrow so the bible says kill the power that connects you and yesterday there are many people it's not failure that destroyed them it's success that destroyed them but the success that was in their yesterday it is difficult to forget good things it's difficult to forget that they clapped for me yesterday something about man craves for the feeling of a celebrity lifestyle of greatness of achievement and yet in the economy of God if you must go further you will sustain an ability to forget about yesterday this is the mystery behind people who rise and then plateau at a realm and they are not backsliding but they are not moving forward and they are full of stories of what God did yesterday oh he healed in 2017 I know there is a reason why the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. To remind you that if all you know is the Jesus of yesterday, something is wrong. There is still something he's doing today. Please hear what I'm saying. I know you were part of the move of God yesterday, but are you aware of what he's doing now? Are you aware of what he's doing across the world? The danger of not following with what God is doing now, will, it is always what God did before that fights what he's doing now. It's not what Satan is doing. The last move of God is always what fights the current move of God and the next move of God. This, this has been established through history. It's dangerous to be where God was. It's dangerous to be where he was walking. You need to know what he's doing now. This was the mistake of John the Baptist. John was at the cutting edge of what the Spirit of God was doing. But for some reason, through disalignment, John went completely out of the program of God. And by the time we get to the end of his life, he's offended and angry, looked for trouble. There was no backing upon his life. John, the man who ordained Jesus in ministry, now sent and said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? Or we should expect another. The past. Meet every great man you know. In the spirit, physically, career-wise, there are people who have overcome unimaginable pasts. Right in your city here, men and women who once lived under the bridge, Today they have become objects of awe and wonder. You know why? They sustain. They will still tell you the story, but they will laugh over what made them cry yesterday. It will tell you that they have conquered the power there. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray over your life that you be delivered from the weapon of yesterday. Amen. Our lives are full of old memories old pictures old books old things old songs even god gets tired of old songs so he says sing unto the lord a new song even the wine he gives people there is new wine acts chapter 2 they said they were drunk with new wine not old wine is god blessing us so remember the prophecy is, I will do a new thing. Leave that one first. That prophecy will become useless in your life if you don't do anything about the past. Apostle, I'm unable to move forward because of what happened yesterday. Now, I sympathize with the reality of yesterday. Do not misunderstand me. I'm not downplaying the impact of what yesterday can do. 
but it takes courage to be able to look at your yesterday and wave it goodbye the nation of israel became complacent because they were obsessed with the miracles that god did in the parting of the red sea and so on and so forth and he told them he said i will do a new thing but those former things you have to forget about them i thank god for what he's doing in the life of joshua selman i thank god for what he did but pastor not sincerely my eyes is set like a flint spirit of the living god what are you doing across the earth what is that role that you would have me play in this season not what was i doing no one of the most dangerous statements in the bible is and the wine finished the old wine finished the wedding in cana the wine that was made yesterday finished and yet the feast was still going on there was no wine yet churches were still being built there was no wine yet conferences were still happening and the wine finished and then in the congregation certain disciples started discerning something is wrong with this feast there is no wine and they came and met mary and mary took them to jesus jesus said leave me keep doing your things the wine has finished keep doing your things and mary said no whatever he tells you to do do and he said all right if you're looking for new wine there needs to be washing first it will start as water before it will become wine it can't just become wine like that because something must happen to the vessels let there be the washing of the water first that that washing away of the old and the bible says as they fill the pots with water while they were moving with the water the water started changing to wine remember ye not the former things remember ye not the pain of yesterday remember ye not even the success of yesterday be careful when you over celebrate results there is there is a threshold there is an allowable and acceptable uh what will I, like a benchmark if you cross it it starts killing you immediately good things can kill it is not only evil things that kill. I prayed a prayer and, and, and I'm sharing my heart in this conference sincerely. I prayed a prayer, Pastor Nath, years ago. I said, Lord, may I never truly see the full extent of my impact in the lives of men and in nations. It is not necessary. I checked the equation of success and I found out knowing the full extent of your impact is not really necessary just give me a token enough to make me grateful and to motivate me and god answered that prayer it's a prayer that has helped me tomorrow do you know the ancient kings because of the way they were so exalted they would win lands and acquire land properties and all of that they were purported to be gods and over the years, every time a king said he was God, God would judge them. Whether archived in scripture or not. There are many extra biblical texts that have these things. God would judge them immediately. And then they devised a formula to help themselves. They had an array of people who would always cry before the king. You are a man. You are a man. That's the assignment. Like you have a king seated. But then there is an entourage, aside from those who sing and dance, aside from those who bring food to the palace, there are those who continue to remind him because at that state it is possible to forget. Success can be dangerous. It's not failure that produces failures. It's success that produces failures. The dry bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not always bones. They were once an army. Something happened that turned that army into bones. Let's leave that for tomorrow. I feel like singing this song. When the music fades. I don't know the remaining part. Someone please sing it for me. Longing just to bring something that's a word 
that will bless your heart. Now, this is the part of the song I really love. Mm. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you get into my heart. Come on, Oasis. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you. Sit down. Are you understanding my teaching so far? So point one, we are discussing remember not. Remember ye not the former things. Remember ye not both the successes and the failures. Ultimately, if they are in the past, they have equal ability to destroy you. Now, for many people, we have trained ourselves to just remember the good parts and throw away the bad or the evil parts i can tell you that both success and failure can operate as the same with the same efficiency as far as satan is concerned in destroying you if he looks for something evil and he does not find it he will use something good like your compassion and still kill you provided it is in the past Yesterday is dangerous. It can hold you. It can draw you. You can enjoy the euphoria of yesterday that you do not even need tomorrow again. And God says, thank God for the miracles you have seen. But do you know I can take you higher? And you say, Lord, you mean I should allow this? I am enjoying. I prayed for 100 people and only five people were healed. At least the five people are fine. They've been testifying. And God says, do you know in your destiny, a day should come when your shadow will even be healing the sick. But something about the comfort of yesterday can destroy tomorrow. Point number two tonight, very quickly. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19 says, Behold. <laughs> I love Jesus. I love the word of God, the logos of God. Now he's dealt with your mind. And he's shown you that time can be an advantage and a disadvantage. That yesterday can be a blessing. But if you give it life, it can kill you. Then he now says, behold everybody say behold. behold don't worry about what you are beholding just let's discuss beholding behold means conceiving your spirit as true what i'm about to say it doesn't just mean be aware he's still speaking to your mind behold 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 Behold, Psalm 36 and verse 9. Let me tell you what it means to behold. To behold means now that you have forgotten about yesterday, your next assignment should be a quest for light. Behold, because you do not see in darkness. He's now dealing with sight. He's now dealing with illumination. This is the entire process that leads to a new thing. He conquers yesterday and then he now tells you, let's work on your sight. Let's work on your perception. Let's work on your illumination. He says, for with thee is the fountain of life. Then he says, in thy light shall we see light. Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says, in the beginning, I want to show you the consistency of this formula. In the beginning, 
God created the heavens and the earth. Now, that, that Genesis 1 verse 1 was a summary. He's just giving you an information so that you will be in context. That God is a creator and he created the heavens and the earth. But then, Pastor Nath, something happened in verse 2. We know it theologically speaking. It's called the gap theory. Are we together? The judgment of Lucifer and the fallen angels led to the chaos. It made the earth without form, without void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It stopped there. And one day God said, I cannot continue to look at a dark earth like this. I still have my purposes. We have to forget about this darkness and we have to fold this dimension of time away. And the spirit of God, watch this, the spirit that searches the mind of God now hovered around the face of the waters. And verse 3, the first thing God said is let there be light. Not sunlight. Sunlight was created in day four. This light is God's life-giving factor. Without this, creation cannot happen. Light. When you forget about the former things, then you have to begin to reorient yourself based on the word of God to alter your perspectives to begin to see properly he said what seest thou and he said an almond tree said you have seen correctly you can see wrongly are we together now the power of light the power of sight Psalm 119 and verse 30 130 Psalm 119 and verse 130 the entrance of thy words gives what? Light. Not information. Light. And then it gives understanding unto the simple. So just forgetting about the past and killing the life of yesterday is not enough. I must begin to search for light. The labor dimension of success. Look, please look up. The reason why success is so difficult is not necessarily achieving success that is difficult. It is the labor of acquiring sufficient light to dispel darkness. If we off the light in this place, you still have a phone, but the light in your phone cannot suddenly brighten this place. It is light but not enough to create the illumination we need. You need a dimension, a depth of insight. You need to see so visibly and so clearly for a new thing to happen to you. Many people who have trusted God for grace to deal with yesterday, but they are unable to move into tomorrow because you become what you see. Jacob taught us that even for animals, if he wants to change their physical configuration, he does it by doing something to their perception. When the Lord came to Gideon, he didn't say, oh weak man who is hiding, come out of there. God has come. In fact, it's always in the character of God or when angels appear, they say fear not. But now this time around, he says, he called him a mighty man of valor. This is a man who is hiding. God was already changing his perception. The miracle of transformation through light is a miracle that is needed for anybody who wants to remain an achiever. The miracle of correct perception. There is a way you are so enlightened that the consciousness of what you are looking at becomes bigger than yesterday you will never even have a reason to turn back he says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small that means if you continue going forward facing forward and fighting is sign that you have strength and capacity is god speaking to us behold behold oh great worshiper behold forget about the embarrassment on the stage in January, where you went on stage and you forgot the song that you were about to sing, and it looked like God didn't call you. 
Yet, it's amazing that after that embarrassment, you go back to sleep and God will never discuss what happened. You say, you wake up and then I will show you what will happen in the next five years. And you are saying, but God, God does not listen to those bots. He's so forward thinking. He does not have time to discuss that rubbish. This is God for you. So he now says, oh great worshiper. And while he's saying that, yesterday is staring at you. When you are rehearsing and you hold the mic, you remember how you fell. You remember how you sang rubbish. You were off key. You were not even aware. Someone had to tap you to say, what is going on? Did you rehearse? Now, let me tell you this. The past has a dangerous way of using its image. This is one of the reasons why God also helps you by moving people who knew you. He takes you away from people who knew you because sometimes seeing them will remind you. This is what happened to Rahab the prostitute. You think she was doing the prostitution with herself? There were people there and he said kill everybody who knew this woman because she will become the great grandmother of Jesus. Lest someone who still is aware of her history destroys her tomorrow. Let them all die because I'm starting afresh. So God takes you. Listen, it is very usual in the character of God to take you away from people who have the mindset he's trying to deliver you from. He will take you away from that environment. It's a proper spiritual quarantine. In fact, let me tell you this. God has a way of ensuring whether you like it or not that you get out of that space. They don't have to be evil people. Some of them are your family members. So he will disguise you through service. NYSC. Others he will make sure they promote you to a region. Listen. Did you know that many of the people who knew us will only celebrate the finished version of us. They cannot stand the process. And because God is working on you. Someone who knew yesterday will come and clap his hands and say, I wonders will never end though. So you too, you are in this thing. And you feel stupid for loving Jesus Christ. So he separates you. There is a reason why Jesus ran away from home and was at the temple. When the father and the mother came, he said, look, I love you people, but I came to save you. Just if I remain with you, I can't save you. There are times that the way God helps you to save those you are crying for is to take you away from them. Because the mentality, listen to me, the mentality that they have, you have it corporately as a group or as a family. And no matter how well-meaning you are, you cannot solve problems at the mindset that created it. So he will take you away. Are we together? He will take you to an environment where nobody knows you. Where nobody will laugh at the English you are speaking. Where nobody will remind you with the nickname of your primary school. Where nobody will associate you with the memory of yesterday. I'm showing you this because some of you, this is the season you are in. You are roaming around Lagos and say, I don't know anybody. And God will say, you better discern why you are here. That you don't know anybody is a great advantage. If you prayed in tongues among those who knew you, they'll say, when did you start this one? So he took you away. Because he's more interested in the edification of your spirit. And he knows that within that circle, it will not give you expression. Listen, many of us have come from backgrounds where they pounded it in your head that they didn't believe in you. And you wouldn't become anything. Let me tell you, it's difficult to evolve in the midst of those who know you. They may be sincere. But you yourself will be embarrassed. And so God takes you. And now when he isolates you, he will start showing you something else. Until that time, Moses had only seen Pharaoh. Moses had only seen witchcraft and wizardry in Egypt. Now Moses is about to behold something new. A burning bush. I've never seen this. A bush that is burning but never consumed. And God did not flash it and take it away. He kept it there. And Moses started seeing something new. And when Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. He said, finally, I got your attention. Take off your shoes. Your old experience. 
take up this was the shoes you came from Egypt with take away that experience and that formula I want to do a new thing but I can't do it with this your shoes on take off that experience for where thou standest is holy ground and he began to show Moses some things Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Remember not the former things. Behold. Someone prophesy to your spirit. Say behold. My spirit man. See what God is saying. See what God is saying. That as weak as you look. He's still calling you the great. Hear me. You are seated here. And yet he calls you that prophet. That will bless Nigeria. And while he's telling you, I say, Ah, God, where are the Joshua Selmans that uh, some of us and said, Don't say that. There is a space for you in destiny. There are souls that the Joshua Selmans and the Nathaniel Basses will not save. They were preserved for you. He says, All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost except the son of perdition. And this that scripture be fulfilled. Listen. There is a level of confidence, not arrogance, confidence that comes when you behold. When you stay with God long enough, he indoctrinates you. It is not truth that creates conviction, it's repetition. Repetition of anything, even a lie, will become your conviction. So you need to stay, listen, if you stay five minutes with God and two hours with mediocres, you will not look like God. There is a reason why Moses stayed for 90 days. God would have said, okay, when I finish the commandments, I will call you. He said, Moses, come and be immersed in this presence. You have been with a stiff-necked people for a long time. Please understand these patterns. Moses, you can't save them. You are sincere, but you are also like them. You are just a little above them. So let me take you to my presence. And he stood there and watched the hand of the ancient of days rise. He watched the goodness of God pass. Suddenly he started having the impulses of God. It's called beholding. The Bible says if you truly behold, the litmus test is you are changed. We are going there. As we behold him, if it is true that you behold him, you can never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. As we behold him in worship, we are changed. My weakness is being exchanged for his strength. As I behold him, my timidity, believing that you cannot become anything. Oh, my mother is a farmer. You are not even, you are not even happy to be associated with them. You've called your father your uncle because you are ashamed. And yet, while you are beholding, week after week, the oasis while the worship is going on you are kneeling down suddenly visions it looks like what did i just see i saw myself on stage talking to people that is a joke first you will not believe it and then the holy ghost keeps flashing that vision like the burning bush you are beholding beholding does not happen just in one quiet time you are joking it can take you five years to behold and god will mark time there till you behold because when you behold the next thing that happens is you will see a new thing so it is the beholding that takes time. Please find a way of believing what I'm teaching you tonight. Yes. So I can sing. And they give you the mic. And suddenly you raise your voice. And someone comes to say I was blessed. That testimony you are beholding a new you. And Pastor Nat says I discern there is a grace on you. And you are flattered. And your yesterday still wants to come. But the courage of today and tomorrow is killing yesterday. Suddenly you now begin to believe, I can be a worshiper. I can be. Once in a while your friends will call you and say, I saw you on TV. Is it that there are no worshippers in Nigeria that you held the mic? That is, that is a demon spirit speaking through your yesterday. 90% of anger is jealousy. So they remind you. And you say no. No. I know what I'm doing. In the name of Jesus. While you are rehearsing. 
you are watching videos, you are beholding, you are studying scripture, I will make you the head and not the tail. You are beholding the discipline. Beholding is not something you use your eyes alone to do. You use your head. You immerse yourself in a new you until you become it. The discipline of the training, the constraints is beholding. This is where many believers cheat themselves, pastor. We think beholding is just merely wishing. No. While you are fasting and praying, oh dear young man, he told you you will become an apostle and a pastor and a prophet to the nations. Nobody has invited you yet. Printing invitation card is foolishness. Just behold. You buy a concordance instead of a trainer's. While you are studying, listen to me, you are beholding. One day God grants you grace, 20,000. You buy a small guitar, you are beholding. Suddenly you are so obsessed with where you are going that where you are coming from, you start even forgetting. Yes, you are in that one room, but you are giving your heart. The nations will hear me. The nations will hear me. See, let me tell you this. In every man's destiny, there is something called the season of appearing. Until then, sit down and behold. Sit down and behold. If the animals in Laban's house could be changed by looking at wood, your destiny can be changed when you look at the right thing. I'm speaking to someone here. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. I am beholding. I am beholding, looking unto Jesus. He says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press onto the mark of the high calling, looking up to Jesus. He is author, finisher of my faith. Ask any great man, they will tell you they knew that one day the nations will celebrate the hand of God upon their lives. You ask your pastor. He will be humble about it and you say it's the grace of God. It's true. But probe the dynamics of his rising. And he will tell you, I won't lie to you. God gave me grace. But I know what I did. I spent time beholding. Beholding. As you watch videos for hours and hours, you are beholding. You are praying in the spirit. You are beholding. Listen to me. Yes, sir. Leave clothes. Leave flashy things. Everything that follows you is as a result of what you believe. The signs follow them that believe. So anything that follows you is what you have believed. If wrong things are following you, they are a report card to what you believe. Don't drive them. Change what you believe. They will leave. If poverty and failure and mediocrity is following you, it's an attestation to what you believe. Are we together? Yes. This one thing I do, I behold. When people are sleeping, 2 a.m. you get up. Young lady, why are you getting up? Because I've seen Catherine Kuhlman too many times in my visions. And the Lord told me that there are mantles of such kind that are in the earth. Just wishing and claiming and kneeling down in front of anointed people for double portions, you would, you would disgrace your destiny that way. You need to settle down and behold someone prophesy to yourself say behold, behold. I, I please mean it say behold. behold turn it into a prayer in one minute behold behold Shalabakata. Joshua Selman behold behold higher dimensions of kingdom relevance behold higher dimensions of power and grace Remember ye not the former things. You came for a conference that will change your life. Someone is prophesying. Behold, I know they are clapping for you. Thank God for the applause, but keep beholding. Your continuity depends on your beholding. Hallelujah. Remember, not yesterday, but behold. Let me give you a disclaimer. There are consequences for beholding. I wish I can tell you beholding will be nice. You will receive a whiplash for beholding. Concentration has a consequence. 
when friends call you and say where are you and you say i'm sorry i have a new project over my destiny i'm thinking of my children and what my father could not give me, I vow to give them. And so I'm paying the price to behold. You will be misunderstood. Can you stand the conflict that comes with beholding? Can you stand the conflict? Some of you, you will not need this message now. This message is waiting for you in your future. A day will come, you will run and look for this tape. You will say, wow, this is what apostle was saying. Beholding. Beholding. Everyone is sleeping and then the Holy Ghost wakes you and says if they are sleeping and you are sleeping too, who is the Savior? Stand up. It's time to behold. And you sit on scripture and you are praying. Behold. Behold. While you are praying, he's saying behold. There are, he continues to cut away your appetites and your conveniences. You want to play and also hang out with friends and he says, no. This is the price for beholding. Let me tell you how you know you are truly beholding. Someone must be angry enough to pass a comment and say, are you alright? That is a validation that you are beholding well. They called Elijah the troublemaker of Israel. They call the disciples they that turn the world upside down. There has to be a name that is a report card. Beholding is hard. I submit to you. You will cry but still behold. Sometimes you will be alone for a long time. Continue beholding. Some of you are in this stage right now as I'm talking to you. You are wondering, oh God, five years you've not said any new thing about my life. It says you are beholding. Beholding is hard oh very hard. Beholding is not something you do with one month of emotional Bible study and fasting and prayer and you just feel it's done. Those are just the initial processes. You will behold till you are immersed in that burning bush. All of a sudden one day as a worshiper you go to worship as usual and then a song comes from heaven. That is the one song. You don't need three. Just one is the song that will start giving you visibility. That one will not be composed. It's the testament of beholding. One day a message will come. God knows how to announce those who have really, really spent time beholding. They will give you the mic and say, uh, brother, just round up this prayer meeting. And God will line up your destiny helpers in front of you. And then you now say, Let's close this service. And his majesty who has supervised your training will honor you in a way and manner that that becomes a springboard. The way you will start running, you will run so fast, you will thank God for the times God did not move you. See, don't hurry seasons. You will miss what you are rushing away from today. I assure you, don't hurry seasons. Seasons have their timing. What you are running away from today, you will turn back tomorrow and you will miss it. It's true. Today you hear Pastor Nat come up with new songs. New songs. The song you just sang now, I was in, I think I was in the East. When I heard it in the car that they were taking me, I said, ah, this man has come again. This man has come again. It looks like there is an endless fountain. Let me tell you this. By the grace of God and with all humility, I have a very busy schedule. And I know that there are certain things, certain wells, if you don't dig before the journey starts, you will die on the way. The sheer demand on the grace of God upon your life, you will need to dig a very deep fountain that hits that spiritual aquifer where water keeps coming is, is an oasis where you preach three, five ministrations in a day. Then you have your own. Then you preach another one. I tell you in two months you will finish all the sermons that you have prepared. You will find yourself repeating yourself everywhere until people say, okay, we, have, we thank God for this, the gift that you have. Remaining ever fresh is a testimony that you beheld well. You have seen correctly. Someone say, I will see correctly. I came to challenge you tonight. We are going to pray. Mm -hmm. Remember ye not 
the former things. That's going to be our first prayer point. We have to pray the spirit that makes yesterday become today. There is a wicked spirit that makes the yesterday of people to become today. That's what is responsible for patterns. I can almost predict negatively and say he will be like his father. He will be like his mother because yesterday is looking for attention. Don't give it attention. If yesterday latches on to you, tonight you are going to break away from it. Yes, I was in a wrong relationship two years ago. So what? God is already doing great things in my mind. And while he's speaking to you that you will not only be a great wife and a great mother, you will mentor and raise others. Yesterday comes. Yesterday wants to invite itself into your destiny. You must learn to shut the door and say this one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Prophesy, say I press. I press. One more time, say I press. I press. Behold. This is my reality, you. Everything around my life was engineered to ensure I behold. My house does not have anything negative that can take me to yesterday. I edited my house intentionally. The worship songs insist that I behold. What I study insists that I behold. When you come to my house, you have to be willing. There is an agreement you sign from outside that I will honor the atmosphere I meet. And not disrupt it if you are going to disrupt my atmosphere i love you i respect you but whatever is an interruption to my beholding there are destinies attached to that beholding do you have the discipline or you want a good name everywhere someone comes up with an atmosphere you've been laboring from january till november and someone just comes up with an atmosphere no i'm beholding your sleeping worship you are waking up with scripture while you are sleeping. This And people say, what is happening to you? Suddenly you will find out that something begins to happen to you. You are listening to a message and you sleep and you continue in your sleep. There is a, there is a merging of your mind and your spirit. Something is happening to you. You start making mistakes like bless you. You want to say come. And before you know it, you are saying bless you. Oh, the Bible said, you are trying to say somebody said something is happening to you positively you are being immersed the implication of your beholding they beheld jesus till they looked like him have you noticed a mystery that happens with couples that when they stay long enough they start looking like one another it's something science has not been able to explain it's a spiritual mystery the same way when you see people who are part of a ministry or part of a man of god for beholding and rubbing of that grace it's not just about talking like the people. They literally, their physical fashion starts to change. Show me who you look like and I can tell you where you have been spending your time. You can look like the Holy Ghost because he has a form. You can talk like him when you hear him enough. Everything about your life should point us back to where you spend your time. Hallelujah. Behold, I will do a new thing. We'll discuss that tomorrow. I want us to pray. I will do a new thing. I will show you something very, please do not miss tomorrow, whatever price you will have to pay. I will show you God's commitment. He said, even if it means making a way in the wilderness, once you play your part, as far as doing a new thing is concerned, leave that to my ability. I am a master over chaos. I know how to turn yesterday into tomorrow. One last scripture. And then we'll wrap off. Second Corinthians 4. Halusa Brandaka Subiatash. Second Corinthians 4. From verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4. Please read with me if you can see it. Ready? One, two, read. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us 
a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Stop there. Let me explain that scripture before we go to the next. Everything you are going through, no matter how heavy, God calls it light. Our light affliction, do you know what this means? The constraints that you have to go through on your journey to evolving, to, to become that which God has destined for you to be. He already gives you a hint that it's not just going to be a smooth journey. There are some things you don't pray away. You receive grace to pass through them. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2, he says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Then he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the river, it will not overwhelm you. He says, when you walk through fire, not pass. When it has to do with fire, you don't run. You walk through it because there are things it has to burn. So you will, there is already a timing to it. No matter how you want to rush, you will have to walk and it will have to prune you. I have redeemed you and called you by name. You are mine, but it does not excuse the things you will go through. While you are in that fire, he still says, you are still mine. You are still mine, but pass through it. For the sake of the purposes of God. Let's go back to that scripture, 2 Corinthians. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Read 18 if you are a Christian. While we look not at the things which are seen. Stop. Stop. You went to school. Read that thing again. How do you look not at a thing that is seen? This is seen. And the Bible says there is a way I can refuse to look at it. And yet I'm looking at it. It does not have to disappear for me to stop seeing it. There is a technology. I'm teaching you something now. That there is a way God can help you. That there are things around your life. And yet you don't see them. Kala paroto siata. Things that are seen, I can look not at it. Pain, challenges, bills, negative things around me. They are physical, they are real. The landlord's call is not in the realm of the spirit, it comes physically. Your phone is bearing witness. But the Bible says there is a way you can look not. If, if you can succeed in getting this key tonight, we have done well. Look not. How do I close my eyes from something obvious? How do I close my eyes from something clear? The devil is lying to you that the blood condition you have, the medical condition you have, that you will not be able to serve. You cannot serve the purposes of God with this genotype, with this blood group. And the Bible says, while we look not, at the things which are seen. There are two things he's teaching us here. This is our, this one is not homework. This is now work. We're going to do it now. Number one, I must teach you how to look at things. Look not at things which are seen. Something must happen to your eyes tonight that you can stand in the midst of what kills other people and you act like it's not there. You have master. This is not pretending. It's a higher technology in the spirit. So you can still be singing when there is nothing to sing about. And they say, what are you doing? I'm taking my eyes away from the things that are seen. And then the second thing we're going to learn tonight, it says we must learn to look at the things which are not seen. Number one, you must make the physical realm invisible and then you can make the invisible realm visible. Are we blessed? Your tomorrow is not yet visible but you can see it instead of seeing your today that is visible. This is very powerful. So you can get to that point where you are already living in your tomorrow, possessed by the reality of that which men call unseen. That's what makes you to laugh alone. You are in your room and you begin to laugh alone because in that room you are in a crusade ground. It's only your neighbors that think you are in that room. The truth is that your mind left that room longing. As, do you know, 
years ago we have our boys quarters the family house and I would go to the boys quarters and hold a stick and be preaching and believe me I'm not in the boys quarters oh yes sir I'm preaching powerfully I'm sensing the anointing of the spirit I move to blocks and I'm saying give me your hands in the name of Jesus rise up and walk watch this I stand before the God of heaven I never knew that my mother used to hide somewhere and watch me it was in the future she said let me tell you something one day I came to do something and suddenly I'm looking at a madman who is preaching I'm not talking of acting I'm preaching with all my heart I didn't know I was in the cave of Adulam that was where I started learning the mysteries of the anointing I would be ministering the power of God would come upon me nobody to lay that hands on nobody to minister and I would just close my eyes and I'm there for hours and hours acting like a fool I was mastering the art of looking at the things that are unseen I never saw blocks I never saw a stick I saw a generation tonight if you will take your eyes away from that which has pegged your growth through the sorrow and the pain I lift my hands to honor you. That's the part I want us to sing. Because your word is true. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. One more time. I lift my hands to honor you. That when he says it, he does it. Because your word is true. I lift my hands. Listen. Pastor Nath, you did not rehearse this trumpet on stage. It was in places where people will never believe. Some of us went to forests and shouted there like madmen, praying and talking to ourselves, believing we're talking to angels. And because we're convinced, they came. God takes serious people serious. Listen to me. You can be in your room and while you are baking there in your mind you are preparing you are serving kings I know your pot is black I know you cannot afford any other thing and yet you are giving it diligence and heaven is bearing that record you get up and you are praying you get up and you are diligently following you are watching the videos you are praying sometimes you cry because it's painful. Your tears should not stop you. It should only reassure you that if you cried, then you will laugh. Mm. There are bills pounding your head and you say, in the name of Jesus, I know that one day I may not be able to pay my rent now, but I'll build homes for people for the glory of the name of the Lord. I may not be able to buy an instrument now, but in the name of Jesus, I will set up a worship academy and I will mentor people to preserve the art of worship. I know that today I may not be able to preach to the crowds, but I can speak. Let me learn to speak to the realm of the spirit first before I speak to men. Because if you only can speak to men, you are not powerful. You must know how to speak to the realm of the spirit. So he starts training you by speaking to yourself. Do not be embarrassed and ashamed of your training. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. For you are glorious 
and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our hands to sing. Father, break the power of yesterday over my life. I desire to move forward. Please lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Someone is praying. This is Oasis International Conference. Is someone praying? Remember not the former things. Do not over meditate on the victories of yesterday. Do not over meditate on the pain and the limitations of yesterday. Both of them have the power to destroy you if you allow them. Someone is praying. Your pain can bring discouragement. Your victories can bring complacency. Lift your voice and pray. I remember not. In the name of Jesus, I remember not. Someone is praying. Yes, I failed yesterday, but I remember not. Yes, I succeeded yesterday, but I remember not. Yes, I was applauded yesterday, but I remember not. Shalakata Branda Gadabalodo. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It says, And Sarah considered not the deadness of her womb. She considered not. To consider is to bring together all the facts that can negate what God has said. God said, I will give you a house. You now wrote the name of all your uncles and said, None of them is rich. You are considering. God said, by this time next year, you will have triplets. You now go and you are reading how to have triplets. And you didn't see anything there that you can do. You are considering. There are times you have to close everything and just say, this is, we are talking Jesus here. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade every other name Number two, behold, mm. conceive as a reality, master the art of seeing the unseen realm. Oh, you may laugh at me today, but the Spirit of God is walking. When God gives you His word, you hold it and run with it, you run like a madman. They may not believe you, but I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. Persuaded, persuaded. Listen, we are praying. Prayer no point number two. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I declare, declare every negative image standing before me, standing before my destiny. I come against you now by the power of the word. Lift your voice and pray. I know the bills are there. 
I will be responsible over them but I refuse to see them I know the amateurism is there I will keep pressing but I refuse to see it all I see is the glory of God all I see is the beauty of destiny someone is praying pray over your music ministry pray over the prophetic ministry pray over the apostolic ministry I choose to see I choose to see wash my eyes with eyes out that I may see chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died I saw something must die for you to see in the year that my limitation died I saw in the year that my yesterday died I saw lift your voice whatever needs to die for me to see oh God in the name of Jesus let it go let it die let it give way my failure my past my limitation my achievements whatever needs to die for me to see Isaiah saw the Lord in the year that King Uzziah died Hallelujah. Look up, please. One king had to die for another king to be seen. It was not a servant that died. One achievement must die for you to see the next achievement. You don't see two kings at the same time. Choose Uzziah or choose the Lord. Choose the achievement of yesterday or choose a more superior and greater achievement. If I were you, I will wave yesterday goodbye with such determination that I will never turn back again. Turning back at yesterday to admire it to a fault is mocking God, saying, Lord, your best is behind me. It means you can never do something before me. Please listen to me. I know that there's a COVID we're observing the rule, but in the next one minute, as you are praying prophetically, I want you to be moving forward and make steps by faith and start prophesying. In the name of Jesus, I behold, I behold. Someone is prophesying. You are walking, I behold. In the name of Jesus, I behold by discipline. I behold by study. I behold by endurance. Are you prophesying? I refuse to remain stagnated. Oh, I behold. Oh, I behold. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I behold. I leave this current realm spiritually. I leave this current realm financially. I leave this current realm ministerially to a higher dimension, a more superior dimension. return back to your seat we are rounding up I have about 5 minutes Luke chapter 15 from verse 8 Jesus spake many parables when he was in the earth look at this very parable it's called the parable of the lost coin let me show you something either what woman having 10 pieces of silver the bible says she loses what one piece she doth not light a candle that's the first thing she does to find what is missing you don't just say where is it the first thing you need is light the second thing you need is a broom there will be an effort on your own part to sweep the house i know it's somewhere i know my greatness is in lagos i don't know where yet but at least i know the region the bible says the first thing you do 
is to light a candle. Lord, what have you said? The second thing is to use broom. You know what that means? Is determination. Determination. You, you, I know the region. That's how many of us are. I know I'm called, but I've not exactly found my place. Today, I think I'm an evangelist. Next tomorrow, I think I'm just a missionary. And then I prophesied once. They called me prophet. Now, I'm not even sure. You are already within the vicinity. What you need is light a candle. I sing, but I have not yet understood my pattern of grace and worship. For now, I'm just copying people around. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A candle. A candle. This is what God is speaking to someone right now. This is how we become masters in the spirit. You hold a candle and you trust God for a broom and start sweeping. It is a hard thing to sweep. But while you are sweeping, Lord, I know it is somewhere. As I buy the books, I'm sweeping. As I buy the materials, I don't know which of them will bless me, but I'm sweeping. I know that God has called me into the worship ministry. I buy all Pastor Nathaniel's CDs, all of them. I know one of them has a revelation. I don't know which of the songs will bless me. So I'm not taking the risk. I buy all of them. I went to preach somewhere and one of the fathers of faith was also ministering there and he came with his books. And so while we were talking at the lounge, he said, Apostle, um, you know, I have the books. I was asking him about it. And he said, I will give you a discount. I said, me? I'm well trained enough to know that I will not collect a discount as a young man from a father of faith. No way. I will not destroy my destiny. I told my protocol, I said, from top to bottom, just gather the books like that. Go and keep it for me first in my house. I know there is something I need for the next level of my life. Is in that book. Are you, are you learning how to sweep? You don't sweep just a portion. You sweep the whole house. Is that true? Have you not swept and found things in unexpected places? When you sweep well, you a coin is small, but it's precious. So you must sweep well. You are going to pray for grace. Lord, the grace to light my candle and the grace to be diligent as I sweep. The grace to be diligent as I sweep. I sweep through studies. I sweep through sacrifice. I've sown seeds to men of God. But I will also sow to the man of God. I know that one of them has the anointing I'm looking for. I don't know which of them. But I continue to sweep. I sweep with wisdom. I sweep with understanding. That coin must come out. I will not lose it. I will not lose destiny. I obtain grace. Someone obtain grace. You have one minute to do this. The grace to sweep. The grace to sweep my music ministry the grace to sweep my prophetic ministry till I find ancient treasures hallelujah let me tell you something and I'm speaking by the grace of God God has granted me by his mercies the privilege to discern anointings graces and mantles is something that God gave me and put in me I can look at a man and know the grace is carrying. Most of us, the graces we are carrying did not start with us. They are older than us. We are carrying very, very ancient things on our heads. I remember every time I listened to Bob Fitz, Don Moen, I said, what is the mystery? Why don't their songs die? There is something. Only God knows what they swept to find something that David had that still makes us sing his songs till now. Only God knows what they swept that made them to find the songs of Miriam that even in heaven will still sing. Can I tell you this? And I stand before the God of heaven. This man you see carries one of those ancient mysteries that makes things to not die. It's true. I'm not saying it just because I'm preaching here. I fear the Lord. I have discerned upon Pastor Nathaniel 
the grace that many of these veterans of the gospel, some dead and alive, is something on him. When that grace comes on you, except you are not alive, you never die. No, it's impossible to phase out. I'm sharing with you mysteries. It's not just enough to be relevant. You must be long-lasting. And you are not just long-lasting based on efforts. Because times change. Technology changes. But when you find some people consistent, there is something upon them. I'm still saying it again. I'm giving you an assignment by the Spirit. You need to go back to sweep. Some of us may be lazy enough. That's why we have not found anything. Get that boom by the Spirit. Light the candle. Sweep sweep through those songs there are some of his songs that have been in my car only god knows how many times i've listened to them a whole journey we we'll start listening to it maybe interrupt just to listen to some things and then we'll play. and one time you will just hear something his name is yahweh yahweh there was a time i sang that song for over maybe two weeks just that part it's not every part of the song that will bless you because the songs are ladders. When you find the ladder that is for you, you can stay with one, one verse and that's it. You will keep singing it like a madman. Someone will say, yeah, it, 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 let me teach you the other stanza. You say, I know it. I'm climbing a ladder. Please take what I'm saying seriously. When you see certain ministers, just keep quiet for a while then come out from another dimension. Let me tell you what they were doing. They were sweeping. After you have stretched yourself and done so much, and it looks like they are exhausting your grace, this is the ancient secret. We find lost things, lost energy, lost passion, lost vigor. It is in the room, but it is in God's wisdom to hide things. You show how serious you are by searching it. Apostle, I'm trusting God for a worship ministry like that of this man. Let me tell you how to search. I wish I had time. Many of us, I submit to you and please don't be offended. The level of seriousness that greatness demands, we're not willing to pay for it. No, you can't be casual and passive. No, sir. I told you, in my house now, there are books like this. And you'll be surprised I will finish those books before the end of this year. Behind every glory, there is a story. It's not just God blessing people. You ask demons, ask angels, because all of them are witnesses. Please, one more time, Lord, the grace to sweep. If this is all you have learned tonight, that if I want to see a new thing in my life, I obtain the grace to sweep. I sweep from experts. I know it's in the room. That anointing is within my vicinity. The grace for worship. The grace for business and entrepreneurship. The grace for leadership. I don't know specifically where it is. But he told me it's in that room. So I light my candle. And I obtain grace to sweep through sacrifice, through diligence. The Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, findeth. Everyone that seeketh, findeth. Hallelujah. Just a minute, I have a minute. I'm going to speak over your life, and as I go back to sit, Please, can you sing that song, the last song, that your latest song? I'm not Yoruba, forgive me. Yes. That song. So just, just prepare them when I speak over your life. And then you sing that song. Can I pray for you? You can only give what you have. You are not receiving an impartation of anointing this night. Leave that for tomorrow. What you are receiving is a hunger. The hunger that produces the discipline and the consistency. Pastor Nat is already standing here with this trumpet. Listen, something prophetic is going to happen here. Please believe that. I have discerned that there is something that happens over this. It's not an instrument, it's a weapon. I want to pray. Some of you after this conference, believe me, 
this night as you are going home you will just go and lock the door and sit down carry your notebook and start writing things about destiny and say i'm i'm tired of waiting for god to move i'm tired of saying things will change one day it go better lord you called me it is my responsibility to make my calling and my election sure therefore i sit down some of you will go to the book stand immediately after this and say please give me all pastor nat's worship from first time till last and you sit with it tonight put it in a flash and you are praying in tongues for hours you make up your mind that sleep will not touch my eyes again until i pray every day minimum one or two hours it's a discipline you are sweeping i know that praying in tongues brings the anointing i don't know what dimension of tongues but i will sweep all of them i will pray in the spirit i will pray in understanding one day as i sweep i will collide with a grace for a generation i speak over your life the grace and the power from heaven that empowers men and supplies the discipline to press till you emerge may that grace rest upon you now every voice coming from your yesterday and interrupting what the spirit of God is doing today and tomorrow right now we bury that voice forever in the name of Jesus the Christ of God and I pray for you whatever has beclouded your vision the Bible says without vision the people cast off restraint I pray dream dreams receive vision tonight Close your notebooks. Some of you left the notebooks where the Holy Ghost used to teach you things. It's now three years old away from you. After tonight, go and carry those notebooks again. It's time for the lecture to continue. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you that everything that wants to interrupt your focus, everything that wants to, the comfort and the pleasure that you are afraid to give up for the excellency of what is greater I supply grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ it will cost you but obtain grace from God to go through knowing that in the end of it is a far more exceeding weight of glory in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray standing and joining faith with all the fathers and the men of God who have ministered all through this conference I pray every discipline and every sacrifice they went through the grace that kept them as a combined effort may that grace rest upon you that you will not only admire the anointing and admire the new things happening receive the grace and the staying power the fortitude to endure in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you sir hallelujah please be seated we began to discuss Isaiah 43 from verse 18 and 19 and we were able to establish a few things today the Bible says remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old we discussed that verse yesterday please do well to get the teachings and listen to them again and again we spoke about the power of yesterday and its ability to impede what tomorrow holds we also discussed what it means to remember not that the memory of a man has magnetic properties it can hold on to yesterday so much that it would not allow you to enter into tomorrow that both failure and success can do the same thing to your tomorrow failure can produce discouragement and success can produce complacency that they both sustain the ability to disrupt tomorrow hallelujah and so today we'll consider verse 19 he says behold that's where we stopped yesterday see conceive as a reality in your spirit and then he says I will do a new thing someone say amen. amen 
It says, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? To show you how committed I am to do a new thing, I will even make a way in the wilderness. Because I understand that doing a new thing seems impossible. As impossible as making a way in the wilderness. He didn't just leave us with the hope that he will do a new thing. He gave us a token of how far he could go. That if it means making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, I can go that far to see that I do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Not I will say a new thing. Please give us Genesis 21 and verse 1. It is in the character of God to say only what he can do. He never says what he cannot do. So he vets his ability before speaking. He says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. So he started for Sarah by saying, and then the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. He is the God that says and does. His speech talks of his integrity. His doing talks of his ability. You need both for creation. If you have integrity alone, you need ability to support your integrity. So he says it and then he does it. So he says, behold, I will do a new thing. Not say a new thing. Not wish a new thing. Not do you desire a new thing. I will do a new thing. This talks of action. This talks of performance. God is saying, I'm about to step into your life and bring a performance. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken of the Lord. It is one thing for God to speak, but then it is another thing for him to arise and to do. The first time we see God doing as revealed from scripture was the making of man. Until then, the only thing we saw from Genesis chapter 1 was speaking. And Elohim said, and he saw, and he said, and he saw. When we get to Genesis chapter 2, we now see for the first time as recorded in scripture that he's not only saying that the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth we see action an active participation energy being dissipated in the making of this entity called man hallelujah that god does not only speak god can do and his act of doing is not just creation alone he can also make to make means to combine the ingredients required until the product is achieved. He said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Are we still together? And then he asked a question and said, from whence cometh my help? He says, my help, I don't know where yours comes from, but my help cometh from the Lord, the maker. It's not only heaven and earth he makes, he can make men. He can make destinies. He is a maker, is a name that he has. He said, come follow me and I will make you. That God can participate in the life and the destiny of a man until that which he intends is birthed in his life. I will do a new thing. It's a prophetic statement. Genesis chapter 12, when God called Abraham, a man who was hedonistic and was called out of or of the Chaldeans, he began to bless him. Please give us Genesis chapter 12, please, from verse 1 and 2. He called on Abraham and said, get thee out of thy country. Remember, the formula is you must always give up yesterday to gain tomorrow. You cannot take yesterday and tomorrow along. You must choose one. It says, the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, to a land that I will show you. As at that time, he was not already there. Verse 2, he says, and I will make of thee, notice, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will make of thee a great nation, 
I will bless you. I will make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He was just informing him about something he wanted to do. It was not yet a reality in Abraham's life. So when he says, I will do a new thing, it's a prophetic statement that has not yet found effect in your life. Please follow me. It's important you understand this. Now he says, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. And then he says, behold, now that you can see, he tells you, I will do a new thing. And I will do it in such a way that it shall spring forth, it shall be made manifest to all and sundry that God has done a new thing and is doing a new thing in your life. A performance, a manifestation of the things that he had spoken. Now let's discuss this very briefly and then we'll pray. I will do a new thing is a prophetic statement that has three implications. Let's discuss very quickly. Number one, I will do a new thing means you must be willing to be flexible when dealing with me. I will do a new thing is an information that I'm about to challenge tradition. I'm about to challenge a pattern that you are used to. Are we together? Hmm. Mark chapter 2, please. Mark 2, 11 and 12. Mark chapter 2, 11 and 12. Jesus meets a man who had been sick of palsy. And he says, arise, take your bed. Had never done that. He says, and go thy way to your house. Verse 12. And immediately, the Bible says, he arose. He took up his bed and he went forth before them all. Watch this. In so much that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it in this fashion. We had seen it, but we've never known it could happen this way. When God says, I will do a new thing, it's an instructive prophetic statement that you must be prepared to be flexible because I'm going to come with formulas and methods that you are not used to. So you must sustain the flexibility to know that just because God is not moving the way he moved yesterday does not mean he's not the one moving. It is dangerous to box God around a pattern. Now, there are prophetic patterns that are consistent with his character. They will not change. But in the dealings of God with man, you must sustain the flexibility to allow the Holy Spirit to find expression. Are we together? It is amazing that the Holy Spirit is never called anything that does not move. Everything he is called, as far as I have read, moves. If it's a dove, it moves. If it's fire, it's not static. If it's oil, it moves. If it's water, it moves. Behold, I will do a new thing. We have never seen it in this fashion. There is a fashion we are used to. There is a fashion that young men must follow to be established. In Africa, there is a fashion. When you are blessed too early, it's a fashion that the territory is not used to. You are not supposed to have that kind of acceleration. There is a sequence, a natural sequence of prolonged delay and pain and a waste of time. When that happens, everyone congratulates you because it's a fashion that the system is used to. But God is saying you must sustain flexibility to know that even though I am the God of process, I am also the God that accelerates. I can advance men. Are we blessed now? Behold, a new thing means be flexible. Mark chapter 7 and verse 13. Mark chapter 7 and verse 13. Watch this. It says, making the word of God. Jesus now is speaking to the Pharisees. That you make the word of God of what? 
non-effect. You make it look like it is not powerful. You make it look like it was not God that spoke. And it says you do that through something called your tradition. Your tradition which you have delivered and many like such things you do. Tradition, there are healthy dimensions of tradition but there are dangerous and destructive dimensions of tradition. It is very natural and usual for a man and a woman to come together to have a child. But on this occasion, he appears to Mary and gives her glad tidings. And Mary said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? And he says, another formula has been invented by heaven. It will not be the normal sequence. The power of the highest will overshadow you. I know that a thing must, according to the law of God, every tree must make contact with the earth as a universal point of contact to board, but not when it is in the ark. That the rod of Aaron can board without touching the ground. Whoever taught you that all you know about how God works is all he can do. There are virgin dimensions of the spirit that are about to be revealed to the saints in the last day as an act of his might and majesty and power. They were used to sailing on the boat to the other side. That was the only, the most secured means of transport. And they said, Jesus, are you not going with us? He said, go. I will find my way there. And they were six hours ahead of him while he was praying. You would call that delay. And then Jesus is done praying and he gets up and demonstrates a dimension. The Bible says he began to walk. So he, whether he parts on water, or walks you through the most important thing is that you pass are we blessed so we, you can stand in front of the river waiting for him to part the sea but this time around he does not choose to part the sea he rather chooses to do something to your strength and your energy and then you walk upon that water and the bible says in no time he caught up with them and Peter looked at him and was wondering. Never seen a man walk on water. Thought it was a spirit. And he said, be still, it is I. And Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, you too can do it. Come. Come. I show you a, a formula. Come. Hmm. That nine years can be put in one year. Come. Come. Are we blessed? whilst Jesus was having his crusade three days and the people had camped at the mountain and he said please release them when people are hungry it's not good to have a hungry crowd he said release these people and let them go so we don't embarrass ourselves he said no feed them Jesus are you joking we're fishermen we know the amount of fish and bread it would take to feed these hungry people and he said then you are asking for a new thing now behold and Andrew brought a young lad with five loaf and two fish and the bible says he blessed it and said you go distribute it i have blessed it but it do not multiply in my hand let it touch your hand the multiplication did not start from jesus and as they went they fed everyone until 12 baskets were left you can frustrate the power of god when god says i do a new thing it means take off your shoes that's what he told moses Moses, your shoe represents your experience in Egypt. Do not think I will move like the gods of Egypt have moved. I am not one of those gods. So take off your shoes. You are standing in a new experience. Apostle, I know that the only way to be blessed in this nation is when I have an uncle and an auntie who can help me. Unfortunately, I do not come from a background that affords me that luxury. How do I rise? My goodness. There is a name God is called, the lifter of men. The lifter of men. That when God decides to invest his jealousy upon a man, clear the way. He can lift you anyhow in a, mere, a way and manner that even you, the recipient of the blessing, will still be amazed. Is it not your Bible that says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said he did it in a way and manner that it was like a dream. Even the hidden could not keep quiet. He said, set there among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. 
So when God is saying, behold, I do a new thing, it's not just to get excited. The prophetic word comes with a challenge. Are you willing to be flexible enough? Who told you the only way to bring down Jericho is to use bulldozers? There is still a formula in the spirit that can make the building not just collapse but sink. Are you willing to be that flexible? This is the first question God is asking us. Because you see, the things of the spirit, Apostle Paul said, the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. He does not sustain the faculty to comprehend them because they are spiritually discerned. And Jesus himself, when they were stropping the children from coming to him, he said, let the little children come to me. He said, do not forsake them. They are a lesson you should look at and learn. He said, for, for such is the kingdom of heaven. That means you must sustain that childlike flexibility. The thing about children is that they can believe anything. You tell them, I buy you an aeroplane and you will be thinking they will forget. You will think it's foolish. They will, they will think on it, plan on it, and wait for it. Behold, I will do a new thing. Can you sustain the flexibility to embrace a formula you are not used to and believe it is still God? Listen to me. Sometimes the wind can blow, but he's not in the wind. He can come as wind, but he's not always in the wind. He can come as fire, but he's not always in the fire. He can come as a tornado, a boy's terror movement, but sometimes it may still not be him. This is where we need discernment. Please listen carefully. Is God helping us? You want God to do a new thing in your life, you must discern because he will use actors that are unusual. He will not use things that you are used to. God can use a little maid, O Naman, to bring you into a new experience. And while you are waiting for a certified doctor to be the reason why you rise, your miracle can lie in a slave girl that just serves your mistress food. Do you have the flexibility to discern? Every day your gate man talks nonsense but on this day an anointing is on him and he utters one thing and that becomes the key that connects you to your next level. If God uses a donkey he can use anything. Remember his creator. What he uses does not have to believe him. He has the authority as creator to use anything. His position as creator authorizes that he can manipulate all spirits and all flesh to align to his purposes. This is a dimension of God that is exclusive to his office. This is why he can use a Cyrus. This is why he can use an enemy. The enemy does not have to start liking you. He will still be used. Like Satan was used that if the princes of this world knew what they were doing, they would make sure Jesus did not die. Are we blessed? I want us to understand the implication of this prophetic word before we pray. I will do a new thing requires flexibility and discernment. The implication is that I must be sensitive. I must be like the Magi watching the stars with wisdom. And when I see an unusual movement, I must know that this is not usual. And I must go to find out what is there. Because sometimes... The spectacular, the phenomenal may shroud itself in something so small and so unattractive. Who would believe that the savior of the world would be around a place that was not so desirable? Oasis, if God is doing a new thing, then you must sustain the intelligence to say, Lord, I open up my spirit. I don't know how you will do it. Your breakthrough can come in a traffic. A traffic. The 30 minutes inconvenience while you are complaining, the Holy Spirit says, finally, I have his attention. Watch the car that is close to you. And from your window, you will be seeing something. And suddenly you will see a writing on the wall. And the Holy Spirit will connect dots. We must pray for discernment the grace and the eyes that see that's why he said behold 
the way I will do this new thing will require you beholding sensitivity the Bible says while the shepherds watch their flocks by night it's easy to watch your flock by day but by night requires sensitivity because you are struggling with sleep if one of the animals runs away you have to you you may meet beasts but they the Bible did not say they were watching and then suddenly they saw the angels sensitivity some of the most spectacular seasons in my life personally and in ministry did not come in ways I would ever think if I were given the privilege of choosing the scenery that would lead to those breakthroughs I would not select how they came are we together mighty ministries have started from discussions in the parlor they were just talking about Nigeria from Nigeria it went to old revivals from old revivals they touched on a general and then from a general it went to a worship song and from a worship song everybody began to sense that this we've always prayed in this parlor but on this day it looks like we're not alone and those seven people praying two hours became five hours five hours became seven hours and that was the birthing of something that would later be a global ministry businesses have been battered at the desk of complaint that while you are complaining and standing and saying I don't like this why is this happening the Holy Spirit is not even concerned about what you're talking about he's so desperate to see you get to the future that sometimes your complaint of the noun does not he knows the joy of the future will swallow up this frustration so he will not he will ignore it while you are complaining suddenly the spirit of grace tells you could this be one of the products and the services that you're going to come up with many people wrote songs from their frustrations they began to cry themselves and listen to songs and suddenly melodies began to come in the spirit and they came up with songs that have blessed them and blessed nations today behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing the holy ghost will just speak to you by 2 a.m and say just walk around your house like a madman and you get up in the morning and everybody's asking you are you all right you say i'm fine what are you doing i honestly do not know just walk around he doesn't have to talk you are just discerning and while you are walking suddenly you have a solid encounter that becomes the beginning of a great destiny my question to you is do you have the flexibility do you have the unashamedness and do you have the courage to be flexible because sometimes it takes courage the thing about tradition is that it's not in isolation it's usually in a group and so it's difficult to break out of status quo when God is doing a new thing because sometimes you will owe too many people explanations and God will say do you know what no matter what you say it cannot be understood therefore keep quiet it is dangerous to keep quiet when you can speak it requires courage how do you explain a woman who claims to be a virgin and all of a sudden you find out that her stomach is protruding Joseph what the heck is going on? Joseph says, I'm, I'm, I'm innocent. God knows. Rabbi. No, the rabbi said, no way. Mary, what happened? I met a ghost. And I had a conversation with this ghost. He assured me he came from heaven. And he assured me it's not a demon spirit. Do you need to see a doctor? No. He told me that which is in me is of the Holy Ghost. Question what if mary gave birth to what was not jesus you are only happy because what she gave birth to was jesus imagine that mary kept claiming it was jesus and on giving birth she gave birth to something else that was not jesus there will be another episode in this bible that will be a lesson for us to learn do you not know it's risky to stand until things are birthed because many times you are the only one who understands what god is doing is difficult to bring people into your vista they, they can't see god is ministering to you right now as you are listening to me 
because we are obsessed with trying to be right we are obsessed with trying to have a good name nobody loves controversy by default unfortunately god calls that controversy being highly favored you have to understand god's idea of favor god tells a woman you are highly favored and for the next nine months or thereabout, about she's in a time of intense controversy and god still calls it favor so when you are praying for favor i hope you know what you are praying for are we blessed i sustain the flexibility oh god god can give you instructions that does not make sense tell you things to do hmm. i was touched when i came in pastor nath a dear lady who was saying she were talking about her the one you said came from her country and just came and was planted here now those kinds of things don't make sense but it requires discernment and flexibility i do not yet see the rain i do not yet see the cloud but i know i know there will be increase i know there will be harvest noah begins to build an ark of gopher wood three stories and they insulted him do you know how long noah took 120 years now let me tell you something 120 years of proposing the same thing even you honestly one day you will go back to god and say let the rain fall small even if it's for five minutes let, let it just be a token you know we we are obsessed we're a generation of guarantees give me a guarantee that i will succeed unfortunately faith is the name of that guarantee he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence, the tangibility of the things not seen. I believe God. There is no man called into ministry, whether worship, word, or any dimension. Ask any great person. You did not have any guarantee anywhere. The only guarantee was the name of the Lord that he gave you and the mandate he gave you. Abraham, come out of your father's house. To a land that I will show you. And Abraham started moving like a madman. You call him the father of nations. The Bible says, and if you are Abraham's seed, it says that if you are truly the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. Are we blessed? Yes. A time will come in your life, brothers and sisters, where you will not be able to explain everything around you learn to trust God and let your mind catch up later on if you remain scientific all way you will miss out on many things because many doors in our lives are time dependent the time you will use to discuss and deliberate and call a committee to just look around it sometimes you have to say if I perish I perish I do not know what it means to enter the king's inner chamber without his permission. I know one thing that it could cost me my life. But right now the urgency does not require wasting time. If I perish, I perish. Number two, very quickly. I will do a new thing. Means be willing to receive and honor the prophetic. I will do a new thing tells you prepare your spirit because the prophetic is about to come into your life and into your space the factor that creates the factor that is responsible for manifestation of spiritual things is one thing to be flexible and to be willing to now discern and open up your heart to any formula that the Lord will choose but then you must also be sensitive. Every time God speaks, I want you to open up your heart because it is the release of the prophetic that God does not do anything on earth until prophecy goes before. Listen, it is the spirit and the bride that says come. It's not the spirit alone. If the spirit says come, it remains in the realm of the spirit. The bride on earth must echo what the spirit is saying for the word to come. So the spirit says lifting come. The bride must also say lifting come. Then lifting will manifest. So in heaven they were saying Jesus come. 
but Anna the prophetess on the earth had to say Jesus come to there has to be a representation in the earth realm echoing what the realm of the spirit is saying otherwise it will never come to pass listen to me there was a woman who prayed Jesus to the earth he didn't just come because heaven deliberated him Anna the prophetess she prayed him to come before Jesus died he kept prophesying his own resurrection and he said if Jesus did not speak he would have been surprised if he went to hell he left a prophetic word that was valid that after three days he came back to life the realm of the spirit listen you can find the truth of scripture written in God's word whether the prophecy of scripture or any personal revelation God gives you but there has to be a voice in this domain this side of God's kingdom that will echo what the spirit says the formula please do not forget is the spirit and the bride says come the spirit and the bride says come it is not the bride alone and it is not the spirit alone son of man prophesy the bones did not move because God was speaking it was until a man in the earth realm began to speak what he said are we together now yes do you know why the resurrection of Jesus is so powerful because you see pastor nobody has the ability to bring himself back to this realm until someone in this realm calls you is a law you cannot come when you exit this realm you cannot return back until someone in this realm calls you back so when they searched around and could not find the person who called Jesus back there was a cry Psalm 24 an explanation as to who called him back and the answer was the earth is the Lord's every other person met the earth here but the earth is the Lord, the real landlord. He must prove he's the landlord by going out and coming in at will. Are we together now? And so they said, who is this king of glory? And the reply was the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And he told those gates, the gates were alive. Because the gates said, we've never seen it this way. Everybody who goes out of us, we depend on someone from this system to call them back. So who is this king of glory? When there was that call, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Why? The king of glory wants to come in. Into where? Back to the earth. The prophetic. Now, I want to say this respectfully. I know that there's been a lot of abuses of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry is unfortunate especially across Africa and we regret it because um, we know that God is helping the body of Christ and because of the excesses around the prophetic and the apostolic it's been so downplayed there's been a lot of manipulation and all of that now many people in a bit to manage their frustrations with the prophetic ministry have thrown the baby and the bathwater together just because a system has been corrupted does not mean there is no authentic dimension of it are we together the bible says the construction of the believers experience is such that when you meet christ who is the chief cornerstone this is the formula upon which the church was built remember jesus said i will build my church so you have to study how he built it that when you encounter jesus who is the cornerstone the chief cornerstone there are two ministries that you must encounter before you are built he says they are foundations of the apostolic and the prophetic it's not just by name or title these are spiritual offices even the new jerusalem was built upon the names of the 12 apostles so there are times that when god wants to lift you he will bring you to encounter a dimension please understand this you will never rise until you have an opportunity to encounter an authentic apostolic ministry and a prophetic ministry this is not human worship please understand what i'm telling you it is true jesus i've said it before but let me repeat it for the sake of this conference pastor nathaniel jesus your jesus was walking under a closed heaven for 30 years jesus not even him 
open his own heavens for 30 years until he came and met a prophet called John you call him the Baptist but he was a prophet and a witness and John looked at him and said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and John said no I know who you are by the spirit I should be the one to submit to you and Jesus said suffer it to be so this is an ordinance that not even me as a pattern man can break it that as far as exploits in the earth and my territory is concerned if I do not submit to what you represent my heavens will be closed and the father was watching as if he didn't see and then he dipped Jesus in water watch this when he brought Jesus out your Bible says and the heavens open your Bible and the heavens opened and then the Holy Spirit came upon him in the similitude of a dove and then a voice spoke and said this is my beloved son question what was he before this is my beloved son please listen he says in whom I am well pleased and a prophetic verdict came upon the earth hear ye him there was no place that rejected Jesus again because a prophecy came directly from heaven hear ye him so he would go to the mountains and they would hear him he would go to the valley and they would hear him he would tell someone please lose this colt and bring it if they ask you say the master had need of it because there was a hear ye him grace there are many of us God wants to do a new thing in our lives but in a bid to manage this human worship and some of these things sadly that go around the body of Christ we have rejected the ministry of men and we have rejected the prophetic dimension of our lifting when Saul of Tarsus met with Jesus Christ pastor Nathaniel why will you need any other person when you've met directly with Jesus Jesus himself referred him back he said go to the house of Ananias I'm going to send someone to come as a continuation of my ministry it was not Jesus that God Paul filled with the Holy Ghost had he stopped and said I've seen Jesus nobody you don't disturb me Jesus is the most important person he would have missed that apostolic ministry there are cheap victories in the spirit that are connected to a genuine authentic prophetic grace when you saw pastor Nathaniel celebrating the man of God and say, I, I understood exactly what he was doing we live in a world where we hate making it look like someone contributed to our rising is usually fashionable to say I was all alone I had an encounter in my room and that was the end of it and suddenly I just rose out of nowhere except that it does not work like that in this system no matter how you encounter Christ as a person you will need the ministry of the prophetic that is responsible for activating seasons in your life you learn this formula and I show you that your life will truly change I am a product of many anointings many graces many anointings many many anointings hallelujah I came from a background where I knew by default I didn't have certain privileges that would be an edge for me in ministry but I knew that these were possibilities in the economy of God it took discernment flexibility and humility to outsource these graces sincerely knowing that they will be required for my efficiency are you blessed tonight do you believe that there is a prophetic dimension that can lift you it is true so behold I do a new thing let me do a quick recap means number one be ready to if need be lay aside old traditions and sustain the flexibility to embrace a new formula or a new approach that the Spirit of God will bring the most important thing is to discern he's the one doing it even if you are not used to him walking that way hallelujah it is not every time he will part the sea there are times he will empower you to go over it 
In fact, there are times you will take what you want to go and take in the sea and bring it to you so that you don't even need to go that route again. It doesn't matter how he does it. The most important thing is for him to do that new thing. Prophesy to yourself, Lord, do a new thing. Speak one more time, do a new thing. Yes, in my life, do a new thing. 2020 is not yet over. Do a new thing, oh God, in my life. Now watch this. I want to share with you three examples in scripture that reveals the dynamics of converting the old to the new even through the power of the prophetic as witnesses that it is possible and as revealed from scripture that God is able to do a new thing in our lives. Are you ready? Number one, very quickly, 2 Kings chapter 5. I chose three of them to represent the things that the Holy Spirit will be doing tonight. This is a revelation that Jesus can still heal. He can still transform a health state that is deteriorating, a death sentence, that it is not over. When God decides that he will do a new thing, he can step in over your health and walk wonders. Are we together? Now, Naaman, the Bible says, be patient with me, please. The Bible calls him the captain of the host of the king of Syria. He said he was a great man with his master, honorable because by him the Lord had given great deliverance unto the people. The Bible says he was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So there was a condition that affected his body and he was in need of a miracle. Verse 2, the Bible says the Syrians had gone out by company and so on and so forth. Let's go to verse 4, please. And then he meets this... Um, young lady who gives him an advice a maid who attended to his wife and the bible says and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of israel and the king of syria said go to he says i will send letter to the king of israel he departed with you know treasures and and they went to the king of israel verse 6 and he brought the letter to the king of israel saying now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith said Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mightest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, you see what the Bible says we should not do. I pray you and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So the king said, this guy is only using this situation, this impossible situation, so he said, to just pick up a quarrel. Verse 8. And it was so when Elisha, the, the, Elisha was a man, but he was of God. There was a man, John 1, 6, sent from God. He came through the womb of a woman, but he was sent from God. And the Bible says his name was John. The Bible says the same came as a witness to the truth, to bear witness to the light, that through his witness, all men might believe. Verse 8. Now when it was so, Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now unto me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. That means there was a prophet who was set over the apostolic and the prophetic ministry is territorial. And within that jur spiritual jurisdiction, grace is given to you to create, to lift. Provided you are walking under the jurisdiction of the word. When God wants to bless you and increase your ranking in the spirit, he does three things. Number one, he enlarges the spiritual border of your grace so that you are able to reach more territory spiritually and physically. Number two, he multiplies the grace and the oil that is upon your life. Are we together now? And then number three, he sends a greater backing of resources to you. Naaman came with his horses 
and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Watch this, verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. Now, this is, this is where we're, we're coming to. A new thing is about to happen in the life of Naaman. But Naaman did not sustain the flexibility to embrace God's formula. Go and wash in Jordan seven times. The insult there was that Elisha did not even come out. Elisha said, I'm busy discussing matters of territories. Isn't it amazing that what looks like a mountain to you, there is a grace that can trivialize it. Mountains are relative. That what looks like a mountain to you, there is a grace that says it's done. And you would think it's a joke. The territory was designed to honor that grace. Follow me carefully, please. Go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall become again unto thee and thou shall be clean. We're reading to verse 14. Three more verses. But Naaman was angry. Look up please. Are you seeing? The danger of tradition. The danger of lack of discernment. This man's life is about to change. He did not even know the history of the one speaking to him. Elisha did not become a prophet by destiny. It was hunger that made him so. He was not supposed to be a prophet. He was a farmer. There's no prophecy that Elisha should be a prophet. The prophet should come out from among the sons of the prophet. But their familiarity and their dishonor closed that door. And there was a farmer who said, I know you are a temperous man, but I will follow you all the way. Until he received a double portion. Now it is that man that talks to him. Listen. Many times it's wise and it's good to go through the antecedents and the history of certain people and their sacrifices and their graces to help you appreciate what they say when they say it. If you do not understand where they are coming from, you may think they are bragging or it is pride. Pastor Nathaniel can lift up his trumpet and say, as soon as I blow it, I want you to know doors will be open. And until you understand the history of how this came about, that's why many times God will give us both the Old and the New Testament. He says, go through the archive of my dealings with men so that when I tell you I will bless you, you will not insult me by doubting me. I change nations in one day. Your life is too small. So he gives you an archive. Are we blessed? Now this is the same Elisha who is speaking to Naaman. And Naaman comes as a local champion with his little achievement. And he's angry and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me. And stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God. And strike his hand over the place. Because he's used to seeing it that way. Someone must have done it this way for him to know. That every time you want to heal, you call upon the name of the Lord. Remember the prophets of Baal did something like this. So he was used to seeing these kinds of manifestations. I don't know what God you serve, but the last time I saw a prophet praying, I saw the energy and I saw him beating down and calling Baal. I thought that's what you will do. And now you just said I should go and wash. Are not Abana and Papha, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them? You see, when you are about to embrace new things, you don't come at your terms. You must be flexible to receive. You don't edit the instructions that you are giving. If God says, empty your account and you give half, I'm not saying you should do so, please. You know, we live in days now where somebody can crop this and write nonsense. So, I'm not saying you should... You should empty your account. It's just an example. But it can happen. Believe me. I've taught you that one of the ways that God helps you conquer your fear is to make you pass through it. It's not always to take it away from you. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. He went away to where? To yesterday. If this is what it takes to have a new thing, I'd rather keep my pride and go back to my yesterday. Now, look at this. This is a very instructive. We took all that labor to read to show you that it is possible for men to desire their yesterday. Going into tomorrow will sting your ego. It will treat you as if it did not see that you were a celebrity. Tomorrow has no regard for the achievements of yesterday. It has its rules and you must sustain the flexibility to open up your heart. I've shared here, I think, about the prayer that I received one time we went to Ekiti. Yeah. 
after preaching as a man of God, we meet this old man who does not speak English. And we say, sir, you are very old. I desire to receive the grace for long life. And I thought, you say, oh, great man of God. Say, kneel down, all of you. You can choose to be Apostle Joshua Selman and go back and scrounge your way as far as getting that result is concerned. Or you can humble yourself. Master, we are hungry. He says, sit down in groups. If you can't sit down, you won't eat bread. If it's that bread and that fish you desire to eat, the first rule is sit down. Are we together? He went back in his rage. May this never happen to anyone. The Holy Spirit can tell you after service, please, request for an opportunity to have Pastor Nat just touch your head if he has the time. And you may say, ah, what? I mean, we are colleagues. What is the meaning of this? I thought we just ate yesterday. While we were eating, our hands were touching one another. Is that impartation? Didn't they sleep on the same bed with Jesus? The mysteries of lifting. The mysteries of new seasons. Are we together? Let's hurry up. And his servants came near. Look at the people who encouraged him, not his counselors. I told you, you have to be discerning. This man was about to go back, but it was not his counselors that spoke to him. The servant said, sorry, sir. I know we are not supposed to be talking to you, but on this matter, please. My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then that he said unto thee, wash and be clean? 14. Finally, he listened to the servants. He could not listen to the prophet, but thank God he had the discernment to listen to the servants. The Bible says he went and dipped himself. Look how embarrassing it is to bath in the Jordan. One and someone is passing and saying, Sorry, are you not that mighty man? And your ego is so strong, and heaven is saying, Well, two. Yes, it was more than leprosy that was dying. The ego that came with the former season was dying too. God usually use, uses one event to kill many things in your life. It was more than just his health. By the third bow, I'm sure he said, well, you've seen everything. This guy had a bathroom somewhere. And these guys would dare not watch him bath. But now you have to bath in the open. He didn't carry Jordan's water home and bath quietly. Do it there in the open. Sometimes worship can be coming like this and God says, lie down flat on this ground. And you say, Abba God. I mean, the camera is on me. Respect me. I hope you are getting the lesson. If he had stopped at the sixth time, he would still go back leprous. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete. Not in process, complete. The glory of God always comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept. Whenever you see the glory of God manifest in a place, his patterns have been kept. The glory of God is like a receipt. When you are given a receipt, you have paid, not you are about to pay. So when his patterns have been kept, his glory comes to honor them. And then the Bible says, hallelujah. It says, he went down Look at this scripture carefully. And dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the sayings. The sayings of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. The miracle of a man. His decades long challenge was in the lips of a prophet. Naaman would have died and written a book in his old age that leprosy cannot be cleansed based on my experience. Be careful the things you write about God. It may be your experience and your refusal 
to tap into superior dimensions of new things. And usually, when our frustrations are prolonged, our arrogance will compel us to create a theology to manage our pain. And that theology now begins to mentor people that God cannot move in this dimension. But in this conference, in the name of Jesus, we are blowing off that roof. God is able. I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Number two. 2 Kings 7. 2 Kings 7. Please help me with the symbol. When I begin to see the manifestation of angels, then I know that there are impartations that the Lord wants to bring. We are going to examine this. This is the miracle of supernatural supplies at a national level, not just an individual's um, request or need. And I want you to be very, very sensitive. But I'm seeing in the spirit before we continue, and I'm seeing the number nine. I'm seeing that the power of God is coming on nine people. And the Lord is showing me in the visions of the Lord that this grace is bringing supernatural restoration to them. I'm going to pray for everybody, but this I'm specifically seeing nine people. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Madam, you are one of them. This lady seated in front. I'm seeing an angel pour what looked like oil on her. Nine of them by the Spirit of the living God. Let there be restoration. You call it a new thing. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Restoration of time. Not just things. Time. 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 In the name of Jesus. The Lord is speaking to them. I'm restoring time. Time. Time has been spent. Time has been wasted. But in this season, God is restoring time. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Be sensitive. Second Kings 7 verse 1. Second hmm. Kings 7 verse 1. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. It is the word of the Lord. But it is not just spoken by the Lord. It is spoken by a man in the name of the Lord. He said, Blessed is he who comes. It is not only the Lord that is blessed. He who comes in the name of the Lord is also empowered to speak for him. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow, Oasis, about this time, it says, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel? In the name of Jesus, let me prophesy to someone. By the spirit of grace, I speak to you that by this time tomorrow, literally tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, let there be strength supplies to your destiny. Please sit down. Two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Next verse. It's a long reading. Let's hurry up. It says, then the Lord, the danger of tradition again. I'm showing you the dynamics of experiencing new things. The Lord on whom, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God. My question is, who sent him? They were not talking to him. They were talking to the king. But pride and arrogance made him to say, what are you saying? And hear the audacious statement he made. He said, behold again, if the Lord would make windows in heaven. This guy did not know what happened on earth the last time a window was opened. And now here he's speaking from the standpoint of ignorance. Might this thing be? And he said, the prophet, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes but shall not eat thereof. It was not God that punished him. It was a man. For violating divine order, 
like he's saying you will see it so that you don't think I'm a liar but I assure you you will not partake now watch this please listen listen I want to show you a very powerful key in the spirit every time prophecy comes forth let me tell you what happens in the realm of the spirit the moment the prophetic is uttered the spirit of wisdom starts going around the region where that prophetic was spoken listen and it starts looking for human actors that will act out what was spoken if it comes because you have a will if it comes to you and you reject it let me give you an instance if i declare over let's say this my dear sister and i say in the name of jesus rise to a new level if that word is truly from god not just a man-made talk what happens is the spirit of wisdom will go around every jurisdiction where she is domiciled and start looking for the human entities that will partner with that prophetic word so it will come to an uncle that has the resources but he can reject it and it will leave him because there are seven or so billion people on earth god is not in need of actors if he searches nigeria nobody tells him yes he will go to us he will go anywhere it is impossible for everyone to tell him no there must be someone yielded enough who will say your will be done are you seeing how it works now the moment the prophet spoke these guys were not there when the prophecy was spoken please understand this these guys were leprous all of a sudden something started happening among them they didn't know what sponsored their discussion they thought it was just discussion as usual we are lepers but the bible says and there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate and they said to one another now they thought they were just talking but they did not know the spirit of prophecy was in samaria who are the actors all the men who were available who were able-bodied they were not available and god said whether hey jesus listen when he says i can make a way in the wilderness this is it if able-bodied men will not help you i can go that far to use lepers i am that powerful he says the leper said why sit we here until we die all of a sudden courage came upon them that they could not even know where it was coming from next verse please be sensitive if we say we will enter into the city the famine in the city will kill us. If we sit here, we will also die. Now, therefore, they did not know they were under the inspiration of the Spirit. A prophet had spoken. Like your destiny helper does not know you are in a conference now. He is somewhere there. And yet prophecy is about to be uttered. And the same thing that is happening here will start happening to him. Why am I thinking about you suddenly? No. He does not just start thinking about you. Hmm. If they save us alive, the Syrians now, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. Hallelujah. Verse 5, watch this. They rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the Philistines. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. What happened? story story follow me verse 6 for the lord so the lord was part of that confusion that people were sitting and saying look let's not sit let's just go and donate ourselves and they did not know that it was the spirit of wisdom some of the things you call confusion is not really confusion it is the voice of prophecy and destiny shifting you from one level and from one dimension to the other the Lord had made, watch this, the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses from lepers. Even the noise of a great host, seven. And they said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the king. Look at this, God used their imagination. Why didn't they say, let's go and verify? They were mighty men. They did not even wait to verify. And they said, let us run away. For the sake of time, let's go to verse 17. 17. We're reading to verse 20. But let's go to verse 17, please. So that we'll wrap up. The Bible says, 
And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned on to have charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate. Are you seeing that now? And he died as the man of God has said. It was not only the breakthrough that he said that happened. The judgment on who doubted both God and his servant also happened. 18. And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king saying, two measures of barley for a shekel and the measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow about this time at the gate of Israel. Two more verses. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows of heaven, shall these things be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. So the men saw all of this and they said, No, we will not be fair if we take this and don't talk to the people. And they took enough and went. Question. If these guys were Nigerians and someone ever told them before 2020 is over that in one day you are crippled, already that seems to be a disadvantage. But when the Lord is ready to arise and shake himself and do new things in your life, please do not think this is just mere motivation. These are prophetic realities. These are the systems of lifting that people stumbled across that is responsible for the mysterious and continual rising of people. Divine supplies that God is able to overnight turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. Turn again the captivity. The Lord, I know that based on the natural sequence of salary and a job, it will take me five, ten years to ever build a house. And God will say, why build what is already built? And you are wondering, where is it? And God says, when it is time, I will take you there. And God will put a burden upon a man and while he is building, he tells him, you are building ten flats, but only eight are yours. I will tell you where two will go to. Please, I'm not teaching you laziness. I'm just showing you that there are systems of advantage in our dealings with God. And that the saints must learn to tap into these multifaceted dimensions. And one of those provisions is the prophetic. Last scripture. We're ready to pray. Second Chronicles 20. Just write this, we may not read it. 2 Chronicles 20 from verse 1 to 30. This is the story of Jehoshaphat. The Bible says that three nations came together to fight the armies of God. And on receiving that threat, they went to God in prayer. And suddenly the spirit of prophecy came upon one and then he began to speak. Are we together now? And he said, ah, this is what will happen. And the Bible says they gathered worshippers. That was the formula. You are going for war and you don't carry your spears and your bows. And you put the worshippers and the singers in front. And while they began to sing, to say you are good and your mercies endure forever. In fact, let's start from verse 20. At least we can walk with 20 verse 20, 2 Chronicles. Verse 20. We we'll read from verse 20 to 30 at least. That would save us time. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood still and said, Hear me, O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. It says, Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Look at this formula. And that should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army. And to say praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. You are going for war. And those people are angry, fierce looking. Clearly they are going to defeat you. And he says guys do you know what? Keep your bows, keep your arrows. And just have instruments of worship. And let us begin to sing unto the Lord, saying, your mercies endure forever. And the Bible says, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. 
How did that happen? 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. 24. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. Cheap victories by the power of of the prophetic and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies question who goes to war with vessels of gold when God is ready to deliver things he can make people to do things that may not make sense you are going to fight and now you carry vessels of gold etc so with the dead bodies all of those jewelries and they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three days in gathering the spoil can you imagine that not three days fighting three days gathering the spoil from a dead body and on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka for they for there they blessed the Lord and therefore called the name the name of the place was called the valley of Beraka unto this day. Four more verses. And they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again into Jerusalem with joy. 28. For the Lord had made, okay, and they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harp and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. 29. Look what happened. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. May this be your testimony, verse 30. It says, so the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. Why? For his God gave him rest round about. God is able to give a man rest round about and bring you to victories people look at you and they know that this result based on the natural sequence of time this result should come under certain levels of labor and sacrifice how come you have stepped in cheaply into this and you can tell them that while i lifted up my voice in praise i did not know that it was a formula i was engaging a mystery in the spirit that was birthing victories for me cheap victories bringing me to a realm of rest behold I do a new thing in your finances in your spiritual life in your family behold I do a new thing we're about to pray And our prayer would be in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5. Then we'll pray very quickly. We'll just trust God 5-10 minutes to do something over our lives. And we're done for tonight. Simon Peter answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. We have toiled all night. We toiled because there was no light and we have not taken anything. He said, nevertheless, regardless of what I've gone through from January till November, regardless of the pandemic and all of the ills that it seemed to have brought to my life spiritually, financially and so on and so forth, nevertheless will be your prayer this evening. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will praise at thy word, I will sing. At thy word, I will believe you once again. Listen to me. Sincerely, I tell you this. If you would believe within these minutes that we have, you will marvel and wonder at the doors and the gates that will begin to open even of their own volition. Listen, a new thing means something, a testimony that has never been captured in your life before not a repetition of the old behold i do 
a new thing. Please rise up on your feet. Is someone ready to pray? Nevertheless, nevertheless, lift your voice and begin to speak. Nevertheless, in spite of 10 years of delay, nevertheless, in spite of a family with no natural system of advantage, nevertheless, in spite of the seeming decline in my spiritual life, nevertheless, Someone is praying. Can you hear the sound of heaven? Sound of many waters, sound of worship coming from your throne. like you to be prepared to wave good goodbye to yesterday because he's doing a new thing right now new dimensions new levels Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Please take it high for me. I want to pray for you now. I believe in the power of God. I have seen God move over the lives of people. I have seen God change cities. I have seen age-long captivity go down. 
in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Right now, you are face to face with destiny. For some of us, you are trusting God for healing. For some of us, you are trusting God for restoration. For some of you, you are trusting God to just open doors and gates. We have but few minutes and I want your heart to be connected. You're watching online and those around the overflows. This is the time to receive. God is truly doing a new thing. Hallelujah. I want you to bring those that are under the power of God as I pray now. I'm seeing in the spirit oil being poured upon the hands of specific people and in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands from the front to the back the left to the right those across the overflows you can't bring them up so just take them to the front of your screen but I declare right now in the name of Jesus this oil and this grace is about to shift you into new dimensions help this usher in the name of Jesus on the count of three let that grace rest upon you like the dew of heaven one shala sobranda siata two three take that grace new dimensions i speak and i prophesy it god is not only visiting you he's visiting your families visiting your families you came under an atmosphere of his glory Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our King, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Who is Kemi? Kemi, I'm hearing a name, Kemi. This is what I'm, I'm hearing, a name, Kemi. Kemi, the door is about to open for you now. There is one that I'm looking for. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the sea creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars the lord is lifting the spirit of delay i'm seeing a strange grace for speed is coming upon people now bring them out at the count of three i decree and declare every age long delay upon your destiny by the power of the holy ghost behold he's doing a new thing i speak it over your life right now by the rod of a higher priesthood i speak it over your life right now delay be gone in the name of jesus the christ of god be gone in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Who is Kemi? I want to pray for you. Stand up. Where are you coming from? Hold on please. please let's have another mic. Huh? I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? Please help her with the mic. Um, praise the Lord. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. We're not going to waste your time at all. I'm looking at you. No, don't let her not hold it. Someone hold it. She's just, it's just for her to talk. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing, is your mother in England? Yeah. Where is she? London. She, huh? She's in London. She's in England. That's what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, tell your mom that December will be a strange month of breakthrough for her. Amen. Because I'm seeing your mom cry and she's trusting God for a lifting. This has to do even with finances at a higher level. But 
in the name of Jesus here at Oasis Conference, I declare and I prophesy over your mom. Right from England, let there be a miracle for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I'm looking at this lady and in the realm of the spirit, I'm not even seeing a face. The Lord wants to roll away reproach from your life. Look at me. I want you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Someone help this guy hold the mic, please. Maybe yeah, any of the pastors or some. Don't worry, just do your work. Is it working? You believe, you believe in, yes. in what God is doing in this yes, ministry? Just shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Let it be over right now. Every reproach, it goes right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Nat, I'm sensing in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing. I know we are going to pray, but in the next two minutes, I'm seeing spiritual gifts. The spirit of God is activating spiritual gifts. I stretch my hands. Many of you will begin to operate in gifts that you did not come for this conference with. This is not just deliverance or healing. This is an impartation of gifts. I stretch my hands. Let the fountain of the prophetic be open right now. There are people who are drinking of this well. We prophesy by the spirit. Drink of that well. The eyes that see, the ears that hear. Drink of that well. Drink of that well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick. But let me kindly request Pastor Nat to do something. I was talking briefly with him yesterday. And I was saying there is need for a real fresh grace upon the ministry of psalmistry. In this nation and across Africa. And prophetically, now watch this. I'm going to stand in agreement with him. He is going to blow this shofar. I know you've had it, but there's going to be a sound from heaven like a tornado as he's blowing this. If you are called into the worship ministry, there is a heavy unction to receive songs, unction for freshness in dispensing your ministry that is coming upon you in the next one, two minutes before we pray for the sick. Yes, sir. Be sensitive. Lord, we agree. together Pastor Nat I want to pray for the sick now I want you to believe in miracles holy holy are you Lord God almighty worthy is the land architect here 
You are an architect. God is opening. I'll pray for you, but this is not the man I'm seeing. But I will still, please stand. I will still pray for you. There is an architect that God is about to open the heavens of that person in a very strange way. But since you're here, let me pray for you, my brother. In the name of Jesus, you will never forget this conference. The hand of God is resting strong upon you. The plague of captivity. The plague of captivity. The power of God is coming on someone here. I just saw light just come right here. Please bring that person for me. I don't know who that person is, but I just saw an anointing. Just this room. Please bring the person for me. My dear, look at me. You are an architect? You are an architect? I cast away this that I see on your hand holding you. This lady. Leave her now in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. I pray for you. Here at Oasis Conference, in the name of Jesus, may God shift you to new levels. New levels of possibilities by the spirit of the living God. New levels of possibilities. Bring, bring the people that shout now under the anointing loud to the hearing of everyone in the congregation. The hand of God is coming upon them. Two of them loud to the hearing of everyone. There is, there is what God is doing in this place. Please lay your hands. You are trusting God for a miracle. You're going to lay your hands there and one more time, the man of God is going to blow this sound. It will not come as music, I tell you. We're going to minister to the sick right now. As he blows this sound, every spirit that is not of the Christ, believe me, this sound will start shaking the foundation of altars that have tied down the destinies of men. And the moment that happens, I'm going to begin to speak to minister to the sick by the Spirit. Please be sensitive. This is not some stage manage acting. Be sensitive. Yes, sir. Please lay your hands. 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 We challenge foundations. We challenge altars. In the name of Jesus. That has held the destinies of God's people. Please help them, my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please shout a loud amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I stand in faith with the man of God. We're about to pray for the sick now. Every spirit responsible for infirmity in this atmosphere of glory and power. Shalapa. Help them, please. Miracles are already happening. Help them, please. Miracles are already happening. My God. My God, my God, 
I rebuke that devil now. I rebuke that devil now. That devil of sickness and infirmity. In the name of Jesus. And by the sound of the shofar. We judge you in the name of Jesus. We judge you in the name of Jesus. We judge you in the name of Jesus. I declare be healed now. the crown of your head to the soles of your feet I declare be healed some of you are standing for loved ones please believe be healed now in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus the Lord is healing blood conditions in the name of Jesus be healed all kinds of blood conditions be healed in the name of Jesus every growth in your body I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. Pile. The Lord is healing pile. My dear, when I'm done praying, go and check yourself. I rebuke that spirit. Go now in the name of Jesus. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. For me, for me, Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Our confidence is in the love of God. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. There's someone you are having a lump on your breast. In the name of Jesus, right now we declare that lump disappears now. That lump disappears now. If there is someone you are standing in for, may the angel of the Lord's presence, from where you are to where they are, let there be healings right now. There's someone you have like heart palpitations. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is healing you right now. The Lord is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, it, it appears, it appears like a running stomach, but it has lasted for months. This thing, you are always having what looks like a running stomach, which should be something that is momentary, but this has lasted for months. Also, I'm seeing someone for the last four months now, every month you must treat malaria and typhoid. It comes and it's not, it's not lack of health and all of that. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the power of the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pounding headache. It looks like they are hitting you with something. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. I declare be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, we bring that captivity to end now. We bring that captivity to end now. I know we have a few minutes, but we cannot end this conference without celebrating the mighty hand of God. Please spare me a few minutes. I want you to check yourself right now. Some of you under the anointing, the Holy Ghost has done so many things. It is important that the nations know we are not wasting our time. Are we together? In the next five minutes, I just said we're going to still sing that song, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. As we sing that song, check yourself. You find out that there is a miracle. Miracles are already happening. Can you celebrate them as a come? Please, can you clear of the pastors here? Go ahead. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. His grace is sufficient for me. Celebrate them as they come. Check yourself. The overflows as God is giving you miracles. Jesus, you are escaped from death like the bird from the fowler. And we declare it will never return. Here at Oasis, we declare cancer dies now. Cancer dies now. In the name of Jesus. Madam, try to run and come back and see any pain at all check yourself completely it's gone look at this lift your hand Doing 
this conference, I couldn't lift this left hand. And lift it now. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. God bless you. It will never return. Yes, please. Very quickly. I was, praise the Lord. I was having a pain in my spine. And I couldn't just... How long? Since I've been drawing, I draw stand it. So I couldn't just do like this. So most times I always... And right now, it's Ben, like go this. ahead. Check yourself. Let's have a gentleman son. Come, my friend. Lift your hands. It will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Never returns. Yes, please. Praise God. Yesterday, I had to go to the clinic downstairs to get drugs. She was giving me pastor. I even asked for the acrophen. I want something strong. Today, I got to this place by 3 p.m., which is the first time I came here late. But while we're inside of our flow, I've not been able to stand and follow the fellowship. Even while you were praying, sir, I was kneeling down. Now, as I speak to you, the pains in my back, the body, all Run. Pains, everything is out. Run. Come back. Can you jump? Do what you couldn't do. Any pain. Any pain. Everything that has refused to straighten in your life, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. It comes back to order tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, please, go ahead. It will never return to you again in the name of Jesus. Yes, please. I had a lump. On my you had a lump? On my right breast. On your right breast? Yes. For how long? It's a few days now. It's very painful. So I told my sister that after the program that I was going to go to the hospital check. But now, check it now. It's gone. My God. Listen, every miracle has a message. If God can remove a lump, he can remove mountains. Yes, sir. I speak to you that every mountain that stands your way, for no matter how long it has stood, let it clear off the way now and release you to go forward in the name of Jesus. My dear, lay your hands there. It will never return to you again in the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Miracles are happening for, in this place. For about a year now, I would feel a pain in my left hand. And then there will be a tingle in my left breast and it will be painful. But whilst I was upstairs, I just felt like a sensation that came into me and then stayed on my left breast. And then I stopped feeling that. Completely. Yes. Lift your hands. Any pain. Completely. Are you celebrating miracles, Lagos? In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you. We seal this by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I bless the name of the Lord. I've been battling abdominal pain for the past four months. I've taken series of medications. Abdominal pain. What even amazed me, the last checkup I did after the test, there was nothing to that indicate that I'm ill. That is the cause. I just you see, when medical condition that. cannot diagnose a situation, it is, it is a diagnosis that the presence of a spirit is there. Are we together? Please stand. In the name of Jesus, your abdomen, where? Where exactly? Just place your hand there. I want to pray for you now. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. God Praise bless you. Lord. Celebrate Jesus. Yes, please. I have been having this pounding headache for over two years now since I Hold had... Hold on, please. The Lord just showed me a miracle. There's someone, whether it's your circle or not, it can come anytime and even embarrass you and you can bleed for a long time. Please go and check yourself now. It's gone completely never to return again. Gone completely never to return. Yes, please. Go ahead. I had this pounding headache for over two years, six months now since I had CS. And sometimes when going out, I have to go out with drugs because any little stress I go. Since you had CS? Yes. How long has this been? Two years. And right months. now? Right now, immediately you mentioned pe um, pounding headache. I could, in the beginning of the service, I couldn't even pray very well. I had to lean my head. Immediately you sounded pounding headache. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow of things in heaven, the things in the earth, and even under the earth, and that every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. We declare, O oh God, that this remains permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Um, for quite a while, I used to feel these afflictions. Of Someone is going to run out now by the Spirit. Please hold the person so they don't injure themselves, but bring the person here. The power of God is coming literally like you. The hand of God is going to come upon that person now. 
please when that happens just hold the person and bring the person here so that he does not enjoy himself it's going to be a very dramatic experience like imagine someone running like you are running <laughs> spiritual things are very interesting so whether it's up or down please when that happens bring the person here there is a strong anointing that is coming on that person right now yes go ahead for quite a while i used to feel these afflictions of like chains on my leg on your my legs leg. yeah. the pain that this precious lady would go through all the time and yet with that pain she still came for the conference believing behold i do a new thing i give you a new experience an experience you cannot get in a bank an experience you cannot get in a mall you only get this in the presence of god i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord my dear it remains permanent in the name of jesus christ yes please go ahead I've been having um, a serious back pain for like two years now, now. Are you noticing the kinds of miracles that God is doing? That miracles that have to do with disappearance and miracles that have to do with restructuring of body parts. When you see a pattern of miracles, there is something God is saying through them. You don't just celebrate the miracles, but you discern that he is bringing order to your life. He's, 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 you see what is happening? He's taking away confusion and chaos. Go ahead. Yes, please. So I've been having a serious back pain for like two years now and I refuse to go. And then for as long as I can't even remember, I've not been seen well. I don't see well at all. You don't so see well? Oh, I'm seeing you with glasses. Yes. Right now, what happened? I opened my eyes and I could see clearly. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Come. Oh, I'm seeing how holding. How long has this been? Yes. And I right now, look, what time. can you see? I can see the lamp. The standing, this day. What couldn't you see before without the aid of your glasses? Just, I could, the lady right here in the middle. Yes. Just become blur. And right now, and right you now, can, see, I her can see her very clearly. Is someone celebrating Jesus? <laughs> Father, we thank you for this miracle. It remains permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Um, at the beginning, just today, while they were registering, I just came down from the bus and I started feeling, having just some chest syndromes, like I couldn't breathe. So I had like an acute asthmatic attack. And ever since then, in fact, the daughter was like, we need to, I need to go to the hospital. I told her, no, that I must stay here for this conference. So during the conference, she came and she was like, let's go to the hospital. I said, no, I said crying. I was like, I must stay here for this. But now all of a sudden, like, I don't feel weak anymore. Completely. I, I don't feel breathe, breathe in and out. Any pain? No, Any pain? No, not at all. I'm praying for someone who is a minister of the gospel or you're a worship minister. The next meeting that you will go to in the name of Jesus, the results that you see here, we release that grace upon you. You will reproduce these dimensions of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear, it remains permanent to the glory of the name of the Lord. Very quickly, let's see what we can do before we pray. Praise the Lord. I've always had headaches and for the last over 10 years, I would always have a headache when I concentrate for too much, for too long. And since Friday, I've been having this headache. Even yesterday, I could not open my eyes. Even in church, I was practicing and opening my one eye, closing one eye because of the lights and the headaches. And right now, as we were praying, the headaches disappeared. It's gone completely. Calm. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Praise God. For, for more than two years now, I've had like a lump on my left breast and immediately the pastor just mentioned, if you have a lump in your breast, I just felt it disappear. <laughs> it's not there again. <laughs> Is there anything hard for him to do? You see, this is not just about the disappearance of lumps. I'm saying it again. That God is only showing you that he can make a way. He can take the obstacles and throw them away and allow you passage into the next realm of your life. And the same way it left this lady, let me speak to someone. 
that that barrier i don't care how long it's been there in the name of jesus christ let it be rolled away my dear by the power of the holy spirit we declare you whole it will never return in jesus name i pray praise the lord um i'm a twin i have an elder brother who has two sets of twins one of the set of the first set of twins one can't speak then the second set of twins one can talk come again you are a twin yes sir i have, have a brother, brother. He's based who has two twins. sets of twins yes two sets of twins so the first set one is normal while the other one cannot speak okay then the second set one is normal the other one cannot hear so during the prayer i was standing in for them as the prayer was going on i felt like tingling sensation going through my i still feel it now yes feeling it through my it was just flowing through my hands now so i want to call them immediately after this set. i still feel the sensation come my hold hands. my hands you believe in jesus you believe in miracles in the name of jesus may you carry this grace Amen. and as you pray for them let there be wonders amen. in the name of jesus christ amen, amen and amen god bless you yes please uh, from 2009 i have an encounter with the lord when he appeared to me and after that what happened now straight to the point something here at my back it will be working within that place like that for about 2009 to this present time when I'm praying, I will hear a voice will be telling me, you can't cast out that out of you. You have to look for someone that is higher than you, but I don't know whom I can go to. So coming to here now, why the prayer? The something just left. Let it never return. We wave it goodbye in the name of Jesus Christ. As it has left you, it goes and gives you the liberty to serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, please. Just five minutes. Praise Let's the see Lord. what we can do. When I was still in secondary school, I had pains in my breast. My daddy was always taking me from one hospital to the other. If I go here, they will tell me there is something. If I go to another place, they will say they, don't, they didn't see anything. Eventually, the last place we went to, they said they didn't see. it was more like it was appearing and disappearing. So last year, the thing came back. And when I was listening to that, the Adeboye's ministration, the thing disappeared. Then this year, it came back again, and I knew it was a lump because in September, I saw myself removing lumps from my breast when I, when I slept, when I, in my dream, I saw myself removing it. But I didn't finish removing it before I woke up. The, what then, happened now? It's, it became bigger, then it, it disappeared now. Completely. Yes. Sir. Place your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus, we agree. that it will never return again Amen. i release that power over you and i declare it will never return Amen. in jesus name god bless you praise god when i came to the meeting today i had a severe pain in my throat and i just planned i was going to be quiet and not be as expressive so when you were praying for music ministers god asked me where's your expectation and you're a music minister yes okay and i did, began to sing and are you serious are you serious with God? Yes. Very serious yes. with the ministry. Please don't, don't find it embarrassing. You want to do music ministry, I, I want to lend my voice to challenge you. More than a desire to be rewarded, more than a desire to be known, there must be a sincere obsession and a passion to see the name of the Lord lifted. This is what really makes a difference. It's impossible to live your life loving Jesus and insisting to glorify him and then to back up your life with thoroughness and excellence and your world will ignore you it's impossible there are not many of that kind are we together so i'm encouraging you i i want to pray for you the final prayer we'll do to wrap this up i pray that you will receive the grace that will lift your music ministry to a new dimension many people start well with god and when some of these blessings begin to come they become completely distracted and now that focus of his presence that sustains the fire, the power, and the relevance and the purity of the worship ministry just evaporates. So it's an encouragement to this dear lady and then to the worship ministers. The key to sustainability is to love God's presence more than ministry. You must love God's presence more than a desire to bring new songs and have recordings and all of those things. You see, a song does not have to be new to bless. It should be fresh. It should carry the freshness of his presence. So I pray for you, my dear, in the name of Jesus. Let the grace, I stand in partnership with Pastor Nathaniel, that that grace that has helped him and has kept him ever fresh in the worship ministry, 
may that grace help you. All of the prunings and the equippings and the trainings you need to go through to make you that vessel of honor. May the Lord make it happen for you. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Let's see if we can just have two or three people. Please don't feel bad. There are so many testimonies. I'm sure there are many more online. We may not have the time to take all of them, but please you stand. I'm still going to pray for you. And then there should be room where you can record your testimony. Some of you um, most likely have testimonies already, especially for healing. But time will not allow us to take all of them. Don't feel discouraged. You can still just document them and then we'll celebrate what God is doing. Yes, my dear. I usually have headaches like it just comes and then if I touch on top of my head like this, I'll be feeling the heat from my head. Like I'll sleep and I'll wake up with headaches. But Let her go now. Amen. Hold on. I'm praying on someone else. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit. Release her and release her family by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Therefore, we make decrees by the Spirit of grace that here at this conference, she's delivered now and forever. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, yeah. So, I sleep and I wake up with headaches. Sometimes when I pray, it goes, but it just comes back. It's like... Like, yeah, something is found something in you. Is found and right now, what, what happened? Right now, as you were praying, Jesus, I don't want this anymore. And immediately, like, I can shake my head. My head is light. In the name of Jesus. And they spoke to the master and said, Master, we have toiled all night. He says, but nevertheless, whatever you have been doing that has refused to work, by the spirit of grace, we place an unction upon your life. Go back and experience results. Go back and experience strange results. Pastor Nat, please prophesy. I'd like you to receive by your by the Spirit of God. Can you lift your hands? Father, in the name of Jesus, we prophesy by the Spirit of God that your people have entered a new season. We yank you from the old into the new. In the name of Jesus. Begin to experience new graces. Amen. Begin to sing new songs. Begin to occupy new territories. Begin to enter into new nations. Begin to enter into new dimensions. We declare that the graces at work in this conference, everyone that has rested on the ministers begins to find expression in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We yank you from the old to the new. I sense in my spirit and I have a confirmation for this that 2021 is your year of favor. I declare 2021 a year of favor. Believe the Lord, you shall be established. Believe this prophet and shall prosper. I declare that 2021 is your year of favor. Somebody is saying, but 2020 looks weird. That's not my business. I declare that 2021 is your year of favor. Favor like you've never seen. In the name of Jesus, I join my faith with the man of God on this platform, on this altar. That the Egyptians you saw yesterday, you shall see them no more. I declare by the Spirit of God that by this time tomorrow, as we have heard, you will experience new things. I say new things. I say new things. For you singles here, we release you to your marital people. Talk about that God reveals things to them in dreams and visions. I prophesy that from tonight, may your sleep become a platform for encounters. New experiences in the spirit. New experiences. New experiences in the name of Jesus. Dimensions of prayer that you have never come into. In the name of Jesus, we shift you. Dimensions of worship in the name of Jesus. 
dimensions of your word study step into them dimensions of influence new relationships new opportunities by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah Amen. let me do an altar call I believe in Jesus he is the Lord of my life and my Savior and my King He's the reason why we are here. I want to do a very serious altar call. It is not only important that we get blessed by God and from God, but we must be partakers of his life. And you are here, the main auditorium, the overflows, and then following online. And you're saying, Apostle, Pastor Nath, I need a relationship with Jesus, a genuine relationship. And there are others here who are saying, I love Jesus with all my heart, but in the last few months, the last few years, my life has just gone haywire. And I'm trusting God to give me a fresh start. There is nothing newer than being translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. And like our father, Papa Adeboye would do, I would make a count of five from now. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. And for those in the overflows, you may not be allowed to come up. Just move to the front of your projector screen. Those online, just stand in faith and we pray together. Ready? One. Let's celebrate miracles. Two. When we pray for these people, Pastor Nat, I don't know how God will lead you, but as I go to sit, please, we may still sing this, we will shout. I'm hearing it in my spirit. I know when God begins to speak to me. Because you see, when David was returning the tabernacle back to Jerusalem, it was with singing and shouting and rejoicing. I just sense in my spirit that there is an anointing on that portion of the song. Hallelujah. Four. Please win the war tonight. Don't share the grace and return back the way you came. Salvation is not something to be ashamed of. It's not a funeral. It's an initiation to a superior life. The life of God. Hallelujah. Now, thank you. God bless you. I want to celebrate every one of you for standing here. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. Some of you are recommitting yourself sincerely and truthfully. And those are the overflows. I salute and celebrate you. And those following from whatever nation, um, listening and those who would listen, it is a noble thing to love Jesus, to live for him, not just to take from him. Are we together now? I want to lead you uh, to pray with me. It's a prayer that will begin a new season in your life please lift your right hand high above your head and i want you to say this passionately you're not reciting a poem let this be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight at oasis conference i declare that Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, of the flesh is broken over my life now and forever. I receive the grace to live a victorious Christian life. Amen. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we commend these precious ones to you. You are the one who is able to keep and to present us faultless before the presence of your Father. Jesus, we declare that these ones will be kept by your Spirit and that they will grow from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus, by the authority of Scripture, we declare your sins forgiven and we declare that the Lord himself gives you a new beginning. The grace to walk in victory is released upon you in the name 
of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Um, is there any, are we taking them anywhere? Or they just go back to their seats? Okay. Now, please, all of you, I'd like you to follow the, their officials waving their hands. Just follow them. Let's celebrate them. You can just move in concert and they will lead you and just follow up with you very quickly. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.